So I will call this meeting to order at 6.15. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you everyone for joining us on September 7th for the uh, regularly scheduled select board meeting. Um, we have an announcement. The 350th parade route and road closing. The parade is scheduled for Sunday, September 17th. I believe it's 17th, I know it's Sunday. Um, and parade starts at noon. Uh, the parade will leave the highway barn, turn right on Mill Street, continue up Pleasant Street. Uh, let's see. Uh, all the way to Central Street, right on Central Street to Route 9. It will turn left on Route 9 past uh, Cumbies and the post office and such. Left on Common Street, uh, turning uh, and then turning left at the Congregational Church, passing Town Hall, um, where the judges stand will be. Uh, then a right on Pleasant Street, back down the hill to Mill Street and the Highway Barn. Uh, Mill Street would be closed beginning at 10.30 in the morning. And um, Route 9 uh, traffic will be detoured onto Maple Street while the parade is running. Um, the uh, expectation is that the uh, parade itself will last for two hours. So um, expect road closures to last until about 2 o'clock. Um, we will obviously reopen the roads as soon as it is safe to do so. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, yes. Are you is recording? That, if there was a change in dates. Is that the right date, 17th? Or someone said yes, the 23rd? the 17th. Is it the 17th still? It is. Okay. Right. No, it's still so less differently. Oh, okay. Every, the, what I have seen all right. is all said the 17th, yeah. and I really hope I got that right. Okay. Because, and but if I got it wrong, I'm gonna be there awfully lonely by myself. <laughs> it's like, it's like, all, right, all my friends showed up. All right. Uh, we have uh, to approve the warrants. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brad, can you report on the warrants? I think yes. since you signed them. Uh, warrants FY 2404 accounts payable $205,168.39. FY 2404 payroll $155,874.91. FY 2404 withholding $57,188.62. FY 2405 accounts payable $90,672.88. FY 2405 payroll $195,097.88. FY 2405 withholding $30,420.33. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, we have uh, on the agenda first up is the water department discussion. Um, Dennis, Don, or both of you? Tag team. So the water department um, has come here again. We were here about a year ago uh, to talk about um, the possibility and the ways in which we could possibly uh, fill a secondary operator position, whether it was a regional, uh, part-time, you know, another uh, department employee. Um, and we understand that, uh, well, years ago we had a secondary operator who worked at the highway department and it, he was there for, I don't know, 10 years at least. Uh, and that gave us the flexibility that we needed. Mm -hmm. uh, and we haven't had that now for probably seven or eight years. Uh, and we really do need that position, whether it's highway, another department. Um, we've reached out to other towns and we're working well with the neighboring towns. Uh, there's also a possibility of a regionalization with um, CDGB uh, grant. So we are reaching out. We were kind of surprised that when the position for the highway went out that it, there was no discussion with us about m making that a kind of a dual purpose position, which we were hoping 
something like that could be worked out. Yeah, I don't believe they've hired anyone yet, so it is... We don't currently have the funding to have somebody with the necessary water requirements and qualifications that is willing to work at the highway and duplicate as a water person for $20 an hour. Okay. There's none of them. Well, so that that was that was one of the reasons why we came here before was to see how we could well, we su know, supplement we that. Know when you came here before, that we would be losing people, and we only found that out like, a couple months ago. Okay. That that somebody was retiring. Did we fund any money in the second operator fund? We do have we do have a, a line item for secondary operators, and it's a it's a position. Uh, and we use those funds now for weekend coverage. But, um, and we do not need a 20 hour a week person. We need somebody, almost almost a seasonal condition, and though it's not a season, it would be all year long, but we may need somebody for eight hours one week. We might not need them for two or three weeks for 16 hours. So it's not that we need a 20 hour a week employee. But More the very specific right? Correct. They do. And, and one of the things we're really, I don't know if missing is the right word, but we don't really have redundancy on the water system. We, you know, I'm, I'm the only person that works for the town that knows anything about this water system. And, um, Question? Yeah. Isn't Bruce Clark listed as a secondary operator? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, okay. well, so, what's his availability at the cover? What's your looking for? Uh, none. <laughs> none. Um, so, let me, let me go over what we have. We have myself, and then we have our secondaries. The secondaries cover weekends, but there's, there's no one available to cover during the week. If I'm ill, vacation, time off, we're, we're really lacking on that, that side of it. And, it's about how do we find a solution to this problem? How do we, is, is it another department we can cross train? Is it a part-time person? Is it a regional agreement with another town? I don't have that answer, but you know, we should, we should consider something. Yeah. So what do you need from us? So or what are you looking for? Well, we're looking for ways in which we can um, fund or uh, have a mutual agreement with another town or a regional employee as opposed to a part-time Brookfield employee, you know, um, or within the town uh, using the services from a, 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 an employee from another department. Mm -hmm. we, that's why we reached out previously, see how we do that, what, what are the uh, options available uh, and it's just becoming increasingly more evident that we need to we need to fill that void right now it, it seems to me one of the challenges you face is that this is what I think of in my head as an occasional position or an as needed position it's that like when when Dennis goes away on vacation it's like that's when you're gonna need this Correct. coverage and it's, it's not a fixed schedule like it's not necessarily a fixed schedule that's I need you to cover nights every Correct. third week that's and, the, and the other side is not only does this person need to be available right so as, as a general uh, way here people with with water license water licenses typically have a job um, there's demand for it and, and, and if you don't have a job in the water field and you have a license um, you know, it's rare. It's rare. It's, so, so finding someone. Sport. Yeah. So finding someone available during the day is a challenge. Most most people have a job, um, and and someone you know with a skill set that needs to act like as a superintendent when I'm not there. I mean, this the water system doesn't pick and choose when I'm gone. So we need somebody who can handle whatever situation comes its way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And and yeah. the other fact of the matter is that. Uh, it would be nice to have somebody in training who was very familiar with our system so that maybe in 10 years, you know, you have, you have an option with, with another operator that's very familiar with your system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
And uh, Dennis, question. Mm -hmm. um, as superintendent, do you have a different licensing level or qualification level than an operator? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. So we're, we're not looking for someone to replicate your qualification Correct. skill set. We're looking for Correct. someone a little for a little lower on the price chart. That's chart. right. The, the, but you just said that they needed to act as a superintendent. They need to, they need to do everything that I do, but there is, the secondary can do one grade lower. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, that wasn't clear. And I think part yeah. of the confusion, or the same confusion, I think we talked about it conceptually when you were here the last time. We did. I don't know we did. So we've been kind of... I don't know that we like flag things like, hey, we're hiring for highway. We well, maybe we, didn't, maybe we didn't convey that properly. Um, no, I'm not saying properly. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, no, no. I, I, presumption of knowledge. I'm not yeah. trying to assign anything. So no. I, I think that's it's a semi-apology with a, if we had thought of it deeper, it, it, there may have been some options. And yeah. So is there a way that the water department could hire a another person with an agreement with North Brookfield, East Brookfield, West Brookfield, Sturbridge, whatever, where they would be an employee covered by Brookfield, but then they would work so many hours with another community. I mean, it's kind of a regionalization. So that's part of our question is legally. If that's legally. the process you want to do, you would need an intermunicipal agreement or create a region. Um, you said there might be a grant through CMRPC to do a regionalization. Yes, and we they will we will reach host, out to them. They need a host community. The host community is responsible for all of the benefits, Correct. all of the salary, and then the other communities pay in a, a lump sum for the shared services. But then they're, we're on the hook, or if it's us, then we're the ones who um, Embrace all of the fees of the employee, all of the liability, all of the, the benefits. So if we go forward with reaching to the CDGB, do we need the select? The only people who can enter into an intermunicipal agreement is the select board by statute. So, so that's why we're asking whether we, we can do that? or You can absolutely do all the light work and, and, and if the board is agreeable, bring them the agreement, especially the CDBG, because they get a grant they're going to get money to, to work on that project, which is what they like, right? So put it in their ballpark, okay. tell them to run with it, and that, and that they can get their funding directly from the grant. It might be a three-year grant, but then after that, the towns would need to be willing to assume, unless it can be refunded, because the state is really pushing regionalization, so there's probably available money out there. For these small communities, that's that's a very viable option. I mean, it is. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great idea, especially if we need the coverage. Yeah. Kelly, mm -hmm. when we talk regionalization, that would be regionalization just of the secondary operator position, and we're not talking regionalization of the entire water department. No, just, no. This just, position. That, just that one position. Okay. Right. Just, I just want to make sure. It probably makes, and in, in this instance, it makes good sense because probably other communities are are in a similar line. Yeah. Correct. Well, and, yeah. and the thing, one of the things that needs to be kept in mind is that if, if this happens, that all of the supers have to coordinate their vacations because you can't be on vacation at the same time right. if you only have one person coming, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And try and coordinate any appendicitis, broken mm -hmm. legs, that sort of thing. Exactly. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe stuff like that. You want to make sure you've got on. Anything else we could throw out there? <laughs> 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 but, <Bus> accidents. <laughs> but joking aside, um, that's just something to keep in mind, so that the, the right. supers have to be on board so that they can coordinate the time, the timing, but there's probably ready money, ready money. I would reach out to CPPG as soon as possible. Great. Find okay. a grant. You don't need to wait for the budgeting process to get this started. Okay. We'll do that. We'll reach out. So that, that will be our first focus. We'll move in that direction and see if that works. Mm -hmm. Great. I reach out to Janet Pierce. Yes. Should, can, should we, in addition to that, should we revisit the idea of a cross-trained employee? Um, you know, even if the water department, I, I don't know what's possible. Can the water department put up some, some funding in addition to Sorry. the highway line item to, to pay a higher wage for someone to, to obtain a water license? Well, it's, it's 
doable if the funding is there. Yeah. What do we, but you also have to find somebody willing to, to jump into this, right? And that's, we, have, we have people on their that's way a big, out the door that's in a big the highway problem. department, not on the way in. So um, the, the hiring of a new highway worker was kind of a surprise to everybody because we had all heard through the grapevine that there was going to be a retirement, but there was no confirmation to what two months ago. Not even. It wasn't even two months ago. It was July when we found out. It was certainly not in time for the budget season. Yeah, we knew that there was a high likelihood of sometime this year, but by the time, yeah. But it's, it's certainly never too late, even if we miss this opportunity to, you know, reconsider. There's, there's always another opportunity. Right. Um, Fundamentally, I would think that the, the financial side of it should be doable. I think that the yeah. question is, what would be the cost of going that route of, um, as an example, of training up an existing highway department right. person? It's like, right. how much would it cost them to get them where they need to be, and then how much would we have to pay them for their additional duties and additional skill set. And because my thought is that we would want to contrast that to what would regionalization cost, what are the upsides and downsides of that different arrangement, so we can then decide what's the best option for the town. I mean, yeah, if we only have one option, if regionalization is the only way it's going to work, well, then it's just regionalization or nothing. But more well, options are well, better. I, I think I also am wondering if we need to look broader than the highway department. Because I'm wondering if we put the training opportunity out there for some of them like that, that, that was that was the thought. I, I, I actually did this. I think it was when we had this conversation. I asked Peter about that, and he put it out to his guys. Um, I had one person interested, but there's, there's just no way they could meet the licensing requirements. Couldn't couldn't get to that point. Could never get to that point. Um, so that. Even though I figured, I, I just to see if we well, I think they're like right. the best option for for uh, being cross trained on the water. I think they, they like inherently you respond. Get it out of time and service, yeah, yeah. So one of the one of the things that you consider is if you do cross train someone when they're acting as water, oh, um, secondary, they would be paid a water rate, not their highway rate. So the rates could be different. They could be bifurcated. And that could be, that could encourage somebody to do the cross training work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting option, too. Mm. Mr. Chairman, hey. Uh, Mr. Holcroft, yes. I spoke to me and Dennis had quite a talk this afternoon um, about this whole situation. Um, <clears throat> what if we, the, uh, there's water companies, like there's one in Sherbridge now, they're not cheap, but if we had put some, like, get a water company on board, Make an agreement with them only when we need somebody that they would jump in because they that that's they got a multiple. You're, you're referencing Veolia, I believe. Yeah, correct. Okay. They got multiple guys, and if we get an agreement that when we need them, we can give them notice and they'll jump in for us. Mm -hmm. And then we won't have to, you know, we know what we're going to pay them. It won't be regional and this, that, but we have no way where we stand and they can jump right in for us. Basically, basically uh, an, on, an on demand service. Right. It's very okay. expensive. Okay. So we got to wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I understand, Don, but could you um, could you include that in your Certainly. comparison of proposals? Yep. And in that way, it's like if it's like if it's a hundred thousand dollars to do it that way and fifty thousand for regionalization. Well, that's a pretty stark difference. Right. And, and, and through you, go ahead. Um, one of the other things is, is that we also have to establish a baseline budget for this. And not to be funny, you can turn on the third party fairly quickly. To go get the grant is going to take some time. So I think one of the options we should consider is do it as like a phased approach from a standpoint of at least alleviating some of the, the stress and burden on you. Well, let me, I don't mean to interrupt, okay. but um, we're not in a crisis today. Okay. But. But we don't no, we're, we're, no, no, we're, we're preparing, we're but, preparing but, but, for things that we see. The crisis will not announce its, its imminent arrival. Right. It's just right. going to crash into right. us. Right. And so, so I, therefore, doing the, my thought is doing the research on this and sort of looking into it would then at least we've sort of done a lot of our due diligence yes. and we have, we've already yes. talked to them, we know what we're getting into and it'll just make things might not make things financially easier, but at least a lot of the paperwork will be done. We'll already have asked our questions, and we know what we're getting into. 
Have you reached out to the other drug fields to see if they're interested? We. This Ooh, is our. This is our first. This. <laughs> we're, we're working very closely with East Brookfield, uh, and uh, they have some changing conditions with their number of employees. So, but yes, we have reached out to them. Uh, is it West Westbrookfield also has had some employee challenges recently too. Mm -hmm. And when prior to hiring Dennis, when we when Bruce retired. We reached out to Veolia um, to see what kind of coverage they could offer, and um, that was, I don't know, six years ago, whatever it was, and it was very expensive then, but we can certainly reach out again. We also did reach out to Ann Gobi, and we met with DEP about regionalization and of water systems, which is not really the direction we want to go in. But uh, they realized, DEP and uh, Senator Gobi realized that, you know, water uh, is tough on a small community with the, with the uh, training requirements and the certification. And so it does make sense in some respects. But we're not talking about regionalizing our, all of our water systems. Right, just regionalizing the secondary right. operator. That needs to be made very clear. Correct. To, um, if, you, if you reach out to the CBJ, then it's yep. very clear. So I'll reach out to them this week and see if we can get a dialogue going on that. Excellent. So yeah. our, our, I, I think the focus of tonight was we, we felt like we missed the opportunity to cross-train um, an employee and we, we said well what else can we come up with and we didn't necessarily use the term regionalization but rather I think we had talked about like a shared services shared yeah where where we're not in a I, I don't know how to word it we're not regionalizing this person but yet we would hire this person from a neighboring community for a set rate per day I don't know what the difference is but to my mind, that's effectively another town hiring out one of its employees on a con on a con as a contractor. Okay. It's, it's like that may not be the, the perfect way to describe it, but that's yeah. what I'm putting in my head. It's like yeah. instead of hiring someone out of Veolia, we're hiring someone. We're hiring that's North Brookfield. Exactly. Let us use their secondary option. That's exactly it's like right. So when you when you regionalize, you're basically creating a district that has its own rules. If you have an intermunicipal agreement. It's like mutual aid with the police. Yeah. Okay. So you're looking for something more like mutual aid than creating a district. Yeah, well, it, it, sounds, it sounds almost like if we were doing it that way, it sounds more like what we have in the work field than just providing a letter. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to let their person come over. You're not going to be covering the costs, right? Right, because they've got all of the employee and HR costs that go along with the position. Well, it's so it's kind of I mean, you have to go to town. My thought is we have to go to town meeting for some amount of money greater than what we currently have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Which is why we need yeah, to set this, up that air set. This is costs. yeah. This would be not for this fiscal year. Yeah. Um, well, it's potentially a portion of it. So my recommendation in order to get this meeting firmly established and, and for what it's worth, I know it's the pricier option, right? But I think we find out what the third party company would cost to have at least like emergency up to a certain number of days for the balance of the year. We have to do a, a special anyway to the police contract. Depends on the and then potentially if it doesn't settle prior to a certain date, then no. Right. But yeah. if, if, we wind up, if we wind up doing a fall meeting mm -hmm. um, to get a line on stuff. We could consider adding that. We could consider adding that. So at least we've now not only established but kind of the not agreement for the folks in this room, but we've sent a clear signal to the townspeople that, hey, we're looking into the future. This is a genuine requirement. You know, even if it's at whatever like the smallest coverage agreement we can align with the, the third party on that we possibly can we at least put it in front of everybody and then as we come back with these other options they'll understand you know where okay. it's coming from and that hey we're really looking at all these other options that are less expensive than this third party potentially more beneficial well why don't we gather up some info on um, the different options, and, and I mean, even money, we we need to have, you know, our commissioners, uh, they need to review, start putting money on a special, we don't have the income for that. Um, I think this is not something for this year, but we do need to, uh, we'll, we'll get some stuff together on different options. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to we need to make sure the water department is operated uh, legally and safely for the town and provides yep. good water to the yep. town. Absolutely. Yes. And so, yes. and so it, it seems like we have a need here. Um, I think all of the things that have been discussed, the, uh, uh, I, I am open to and I haven't heard any objections from the other board members. And I think fundamentally it's a, so I would say go do more research um, on all these options help us understand what the list of needs each one covers, the um, where, where, we, where we're versus what they don't cover and how much they cost, and also the time frame. Like for example, Veolia, we could probably have an on-demand contract where we could, like, we don't pay anything up front, but we pay like a, a top tier rate if we need someone, and that might give us the emergency coverage that sort of gives the security blanket so that if something happens, we're not stranded without an operator. And while we have that in place, we then work on longer term, more financially efficient options that we can then put in place. And I'm sure Viola would be happy to offer us any number of options, like the entirely a la carte, we pay nothing unless they send someone to the, we pay them a, a fixed amount and that gets a, a, a fixed amount per year and that gets us so many hours either prepaid or at a, at a lower rate than the a la carte. And so I'm, I'm, I believe they're a very big water company. They probably have enough smart people that they know to do this and they are, we're probably not the only people near them that have this issue. So I would, I would suspect they would say, yeah, you're not the first ones to ask us about this and this is what we are, this, these are, this is what we're willing to do for people that need your, the help you're asking for. So can we set a timeline on when we, you can get that back to us so that it doesn't, <clears throat> kind of get the can doesn't get kicked down the road? Probably not by your next meeting, but maybe with them in, within a month. So the middle of October? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Try to gather up. All right. Try so to gather up some stuff. The, the third week of October? Yep. Which would be the 18th, I think. Okay. All right. Can do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, you had your hand up earlier. No, I think you and Beth pretty much sized it all up about what right. happened. Somebody, but Dennis, you're only a doctor for emergency and vacations only. 
And you said if you're Batman, you were trying to get someone on from day three. That's what I want. Uh, so, I, well, we, we, to get somebody cross train, we said, what, what can we come up with? And that's where the one day a week came from. Well, if we had, we don't need somebody five days a week. What about one day a week? We can get them trained, get them to learn the system. Because yeah. even, even hiring, I don't want to keep rambling on, but hiring somebody from Veolia, they can't come in and run the system if they don't know the system. That doesn't happen. And, and further on that Veolia topic, they're fantastic. They are no joke. I worked for them for years. Um, well, they'll have to come in and, and see what our system is. Yeah. I mean, that's just standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but they also need to be trained on the system. Not, not just see it, but they need to know how it operates. Yeah, but those, those guys are pretty professional. That, that's what they do. And you know you work for them. I do. And that's why I'm saying they need to be trained. Uh, I'm yeah, sure. they, 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 right. It's a big company. I, I, there's, no, there's no nonsense. No, no. They, they, they're, they're no nonsense. Right. That's right. It's very professional. Yeah. There'd, be a, there'd be a ramp up period and you would probably have to, they would either. We have to fund yeah. the ramp up period. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or a, 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 yeah, a period where we would probably have to put some effort into documentation. We might have to bring a couple of their guys in and make, so you could familiarize them and say, yeah. this is how we do it. So then, when we need it, so then when we need someone to come in, someone who's been oriented on our system, is right. ready right. to step in. It's like, and, and my thought is, we'll we'll figure that out as we get closer to doing it. So. Yeah, and, and that could be, you know, without a talk of benefits, that could be a real option. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, yeah, it's like let's let, let, let's ex uh, go ahead and explore those options. Yep. And I mean, the idea of um, the the contract employee from Veolia whether we can um, arrange something on an as-needed basis where we get a uh, call, uh, call on a neighboring town, um, more of a, uh, I always call it a friendly contracting rather than the commercial contract with Veolia, um, and regionalization. And if we wanted to, it's like, and then for the, uh, for the shared, for, for the um, cross-trained employee, I mean, I guess my thought is I, I mean, we're, open, we're open to that, if you could help us understand maybe what, what you think that would cost. Um, yeah, I'd, cause, I mean, I'd like to try to look into that as well. Yeah. And I think yeah. we want to approach that when they're working their non-water job, they would do the non-water job and get the non-water rate. And so for that, we would have to understand how much it would cost to get someone trained up to where they could serve that role, and then what would it cost them to have them perform that role, um, the thought being that maybe eight, hour, eight hours a week um, or whatever we, whatever we decide we're going to do. I mean, maybe we choose to just have them be on call. It's like, I don't know what the right option is, yeah. but we I, can figure it out. I think there's a lot of options. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. No, well, thank you. Yeah. We, we want, I, I think I will risk speaking for the board and say, I think we all want to help um, prevent this from prevent this becoming a big problem. Uh, personally, I would like to uh, thank you for coming forward and bringing this up to us before the crisis hits. I, I think that's, I appreciate your foresight and, um, and looking down the road. Great. Okay. So our second topic of discussion, uh, there's a Maya grant annually for, often it's for safety. This year it's for building. Freeze protection, correct? Freeze protection. We had that cold snap last year, buildings mm -hmm. froze. So Maya has some money available to prevent. Yeah. Maya is our insurance company? Yes. Is, okay, thank you. Yep. Just for, yep. for, for those at home thank who you. don't recognize that. Thank you. Yep. Um, so they have some money available to do building upgrades to prevent frozen pipes. Mm -hmm. If no one else, and I haven't heard of anyone else, has a plan to utilize that grant or apply for the grant, the water department would like to. We have our standby generator on our replacement plan for next year. Mm -hmm. And we would like to apply, I think it's a $10,000 grant, and apply to use that $10,000 uh, towards our generator as our generator provides the backup heat for our water treatment facility. And it's 1976? Yep, 1976. Yeah. Yep. So this, this, would, this would effectively supplement the, uh, or this, this would allow the town to get the generator replaced next year with a uh, smaller of its yeah, own money. Correct. This, this yeah. wouldn't cover the cost of replacing the generator. This would help mitigate the cost. We, we have the funds budgeted to replace the generator. Mm -hmm. um, it's on our capital plan. Uh, but this would uh, help us retain a little bit of that. So This would, allow, like this to, would give us $10,000 to do something else with Yeah, it. yeah. So we'd like, something to, else needs to. Yeah, we'd like to try that. No one else has mentioned that it was brought up the um, department head meeting. And at that point, everybody said, no, because they didn't need it. Not that they. 
Good advice. I'll read you. But oh, <laughs> it's just. The water system is really well, important. Well, I didn't want to. <laughs> what is the time frame for that grant application? I don't know. Okay, then I would. Then I think that we should. Um, then I would I encourage you to work with uh, Kelly and Kathy to get that started, and then work with Kathy because Kelly doesn't know how to do the right grant. Well, I, 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 more <laughs> me, I more mentioned your I'll name. Happy to give you any paperwork we'll, I have that you well, need. We'll but, take care of this okay, one. And, then, <laughs> and if anyone asks for it, and just let Kathy know that if anyone asks about it, um, that to uh, have her let the select board know so that we can um, think, consider the priorities. So sure. do, you, do you want to uh, make a motion that we uh, uh, support the water department? Sorry. Okay. So I get to guess. Um, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. We're good. Thank you. I did have another uh, request for a uh, topic of discussion for this meeting, but it didn't make it, which was the high water mark. And I'd like to be sure that that gets on to the next selectman's meeting. Okay. Why don't, uh, if you're around the end of the meeting, why don't you, Kelly, and I huddle up? Okay. From from what I could tell, it wasn't something that was ready to come before the select board. But I, I remember I remember the request. I just don't remember exactly how okay. it was set up. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, item agenda number two: um, cable upgrades from by Aaron Keys. Right. Had to be you. The only person in the room I don't know. <laughs> I'm new to town. No, I'm not. Thank you. Um, Kelly, do you want me to go through the slides one by one, or do you want me to just sort of? That's entirely up to the board. Oh, okay. They have access to them, so uh, this is their show. Great. So we'll let them All right. Well, why don't I introduce myself and, and just go over kind of at a high level what this project is all about, and then we can take it from there. So I'm Aaron Keyes. I am the general manager of Spencer Cable Access, and I also run a small consultancy, um, mostly to serve small businesses with, with their marketing needs. But um, when uh, Kelly, I think, reached out to our town administrator in Spencer, um, he forwarded that to me, and I said, "Let me see what I can do because I really like." There's, you know, I've been involved in cable access since I was in like the tenth grade, which I won't tell you how long ago that was, but um, <laughs> that's when it all sort of started for me. And I've got some expertise and, and experience in this area, so I thought it would be useful um, to sort of bring that to the table. That started maybe in uh, I don't know June or so, um, where we, you know, I worked with Sharon. Uh, Kelly and um, I'm not sure if everybody knows Jacob, uh, Jacob Gorm, um, to kind of go through the lay of the land um, and what does the situation look like. Um, we walk through this space and we walk through the studio to figure out what we need to do with goal number one, priority one being to get meeting content back on your PEG channels. Mm -hmm. PEG is public education uh, government, so you're, you've got to, you all know this, but for the sake of just context, um, municipalities are, are within cable systems are allowed to have three public access channels. You have them. They haven't been working in the sense that your cable cast, not broadcast because it's not air, but your cable cast has not been working for some technical reasons and some, some staffing challenges as well. Um, I'm glad to say, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but it's back. It's working now. If you turn on your channels, there is content there, and that's largely thanks to Jacob, um, who was able to find some time to come in and really focus and troubleshoot that. We all kind of worked together to narrow down what needed to be done, um, and that's happening. What's not happening yet is um, current meetings getting put on the channel. So that really is an immediate step two that needs to that needs to take place. There's, I'll go over what has to happen in order to get there. But that's really great progress. I was really happy to see that that came together quickly and that the, um, call it the feed, is back. So if you go home tonight and turn on those channels, you'll, you'll see something. Is the school channel on? I, I don't know. We didn't deal with the school channel at all, and that's managed so, elsewhere. So we have two channels that belong to the town, yeah. one that belongs to the high school. We don't have any access or control over the high school channel. So if that one is not running, that one's not within our middle house for us to prepare, access, or get up and running. The other two that the town are in charge of and that the town has access to, those are both 
running a bulletin screen at this time. Yeah, by bulletin screen, you just mean an informational crawl. Just text. There's no meeting video, just... Correct. Thank you. Yeah, bulletins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's the current state. What you have in front of you is uh, sort of a summary of the plan and recommendations that I've come up with based on all of that groundwork and background that Sharon, myself, Kelly, and Jacob went through. Um, that this doesn't mean this is what we're doing. It means I'm putting it in front of you to say this is a plan. You may choose to do it, not do it, do part of it. It's completely up to you. But this is the recommendation that I that I'm bringing bringing to you. And that was what phase one of this um, uh, engagement between the t between the town and myself involved was, was putting together this plan, um, as well as some communication material to let the public know that when it's time to let the public know that cable access is back. Mm -hmm. So that's what you see here. Um, you have it in front of you. I'll go through and please feel free to stop with any questions. I know some of this can be technical. I tried to be as clear as I could, but until someone else reads it and sees it, I don't know how clear I was. So It was obvious to you when you were Yeah, right. I knew what I meant. Well, I, I know how that works. I do it all the time. Um, all right, so slide technically slide two, but so page two for you. Um, you know, I broke this out in, in sort of a project management style, so you've got priorities and subtasks. So 1.1 really was to restore what's called Telview. That's your, that's your broadcast automation system. It's equipment that you have at, um, at the studio. That is now restored in the sense that it's working, it's functioning, there's content running through it. So it is transmitting, it is transmitting um, content. If we, you know, there's some things that have to happen, but um, technically we could, you know, program actual meeting content. There's some training that has to happen, some other things, but that's there, that, that ability is there now. Um, the only thing that's, I would say, not done here on 1.1 on is your RTMP setup, which is a internet connection. Um, as well as training, because we don't know who to train, and um, we, we don't know exactly what we're training on yet. But that recommendation is here that you should do this RTMP setup and training. And the, the costs that you see under budget are guesstimates from my head. I mean, there is nothing there other than me, based on my experience, knowing what I would charge for something like that and just sort of finding a happy medium. So those are really just guesstimates. There's no quotes. I'm not proposing this. You don't need to approve this necessarily in terms of like, this is not a, a proposal. Okay. Now, please. Okay. Um. What is the top of, what's the number saying in the top left? Nope, second page. Second 1.1. 1. 1. Okay. 1.1. 1. 1. Yep. But it's definitely there. But he has, um, basically, they are missing this page. Oh, oh, okay, and, but okay. I have it and they, they are, Th that's they're okay. You, you have the content there. It, it's a, th this is a summary. The next one is getting into some detail. So it's, it's okay if you're on, on, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, question for you: These costs, yeah. these are project costs. There's no recurring service fees or anything like that. There. There may be. I mean, you're going to have, you know, depending on the type of uh, streaming protocol that you have. And when I get into that recommendation, you'll see what I mean. There are sometimes fees. Like, for example, there's a service called Restream.io, and that helps me propagate a stream to multiple sources. And that costs me something like I don't know, a hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Right, so there there will be some sort of renewable, yeah. I, I, yep. I, but my point is the the numbers you're presenting here don't include any of those recurring service fees. These no, are, these are all project of getting things stood up. Yeah, and I and think if they did, I noted it. Okay. Yeah, for example, deliver in person training two hundred and fifty dollars per session. So I've noted if there is some kind of okay. recurrence okay. or yeah. Okay. Any questions on one point one? Okay. 1.2 is related to this room. So propose a technical solution for covering meetings more efficiently. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this for a second. So right now, if you look around, Sharon is set up a tripod and a camera connected to a Y splitter for audio that runs across the floor that connects to three microphones. And we have one camera, right? And I have a presentation here that I'm not able to put on a screen anywhere so that everyone can see what's going on. 
So my proposal here, the plan would be to outfit this space essentially as a production studio where you would have three, I'm recommending three, it doesn't necessarily have to be, it could be more technically, I guess it could be less, but I wouldn't recommend it. Three PTZ cameras, that's pan, tilt, zoom, that are operated remotely. So my thought is that one would be um, mounted on that pole and two would be in the back of the room center to where you normally set up this table on top of each other. That's because I want to get one wide shot that always stays wide and one for close up. So right now I'm speaking, there would be a camera from that pole that's a close up of me. And when you ask me a question, that other close up can come in and get you. Mm -hmm. And we would have a live switching console. I think we talked about putting it um, in this spot over here, kind of where the, the piano is. Beside the piano. Beside the piano, yeah. Yes. Um, so that in, in that instance, the staff person or the volunteer for, for cable access would be there. They would set up, um, I think, five or six what's called gooseneck microphones. So those are the ones you see if you ever watch C-SPAN. Who watches C-SPAN? Nobody? Okay. Um, any government meetings where you see that sort of thin you know, microphone, with the, that's a gooseneck microphone. That's what would be around the table. And those would terminate into a digital, uh, analog to digital converter that would send all audio over network via one cable. And so now we have plenty of control over what's going on in terms of audio and the setup is just bringing microphones out and that's it. So that's another way to sort of make this a little bit easier. The other thing I tried to consider with this is um, streaming. So from this room, as long as there's a, a viable internet connection, I don't, I don't know what that structure looks like here, we would be able to stream uh, to Facebook or YouTube or wherever you wanted to stream, as well as to your cable channels. So at home right now, someone could flip on the government channel and watch this meeting live doesn't mean they'll participate. In other words, if you had something where you're doing a public hearing, they wouldn't be participating, but they would be watching it live. It would also be made available for broadcast later, and every meeting would immediately be available for playback on whatever streaming platform you decide to use, If you, should you decide to do that. I mean, I don't know if you want to do that. B-SPAN, corporate span B-SPAN, yeah. I like that. I'm going to pretend I came up with that. <laughs> I expect nothing less than that. <laughs> right. Um, so you can see what's included in this in this plan. Um, I'm I'm think I'm offering some guesstimates here. Although you know I did get some initial uh, estimates in for that, and they're they're the lowest of the estimates is higher than what I have here. Actually, yeah, I would say that it is. Um, so that's you know that's that's sort of the idea here. It turns this space into a into a, essentially a production studio. The other thing that I considered was to make this easy on staff and volunteers who may want to come and, and, and you know, provide some time to um, the cable access station, it will give them the ability to run the meeting fully remotely. So I could be at my home in Auburn and run this meeting. That helps because if I can't get there, if somebody calls out, if we need a backup, they're able to just log in and do it. The only thing we would have to think about is somebody just needs to put the microphones out and connect them to that digital box. That's it. Everything else can be done remotely. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's important because it, it makes it a little bit easier for somebody to raise their hand and say, yes, I will do it. I will come and volunteer. All right. Questions on 1.2. Are you taking questions from, I don't know if it's, if you're treating it as a public hearing or not. Uh, let's see. We're informal here. Okay, so, all right, so... It's, it's done. Is there any, wait, any possibility of providing a sound system so that people could hear? Yeah. This room is challenged, particularly if you're in air conditioning and so on. Yeah. So, and we're seeing the microphones for the system, but is there a way that it, you can introduce a sound? That's a great question, and I'm sorry I didn't mention that. That's actually scoped in the recommendation. So you would have some ceiling speakers, that can be adjusted from a panel that's connect that's attached to the wall back there and you could use that independently of whether or not cable is covering a meeting it could be just for the room or for both so yes that's scoped as part of the project yeah the other thing that's scoped is i, I talked about how i'm doing this presentation and no one can see it a tv that would be mounted in the middle of this wall that wouldn't extend any more than the width of the closed curtain. So you wouldn't, it wouldn't be interfering with any sunlight coming in or anything like that. 
that would be there for at least the folks that are out here can look back and see that. So my computer could be set up and you could see it. And I can switch, instead of being on a camera, I can switch to the computer display for folks at home to see it crisp and clear on their TV. Yes? Why would you use a pull-up screen with a projector? Um, because I have to then put a projector somewhere, and that gets in the way, and that's something I have to, we, you'd have to set up every time. It so. It wouldn't be digital. They wouldn't be able yeah, to stream. Yeah, and I, then I can't get it back there. So the the monitors really are the are the way to go. And it, and it wouldn't, you know, in this space, the size of the screen really wouldn't be too small. I think we're recommending 65 or, or 70. I can't remember exactly what the spec was. Any other questions on 1.2? Yep. Yeah. This is a silly question. The last time I was involved with this, I thought there was a studio over in the elementary school area. Is this different than? It, it is different. There is a studio there, and I'm going to talk about how they were, will connect in a minute. There, there's a there's a part of this that relates to the studio. Yep. Jeff, I think uh, as I understand this project, and I'm going to bounce this off you, Aaron, is that um, this what we're talking about here is solely for um, capturing the meetings on video and being able to and being able to uh, send it to a place to be stored or to a place to be streamed thing and things like that and so it's setting up this room for holding meetings whereas the uh, the, the broadcast studio over the elementary school is probably not suited for a public meeting it's probably suited more for i would guess from like a, a talk show right yeah you, you wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily recommend holding a public meeting at the studio right um or it's like when meetings on it's yeah, committee right. too. You're not. Well, not board of selectmen. <laughs> Any meeting that that it's determined that should be on cable access that happens in this room. Well, that's, so that, that, that's fine. Yeah. Those examples, we're all sitting here. Yeah. Right. Um, any other on one point two? Okay. One point three, I think, relates to. And by the way, other than one point one, the rest of these aren't necessarily in a priority order. 1.1, getting the, getting the broadcast system working, that was priority one. The rest are to follow. So um, 1.3 has to do with recruiting volunteer staff um, to operate equipment and cover meetings and events. Um, Sharon is a staff of one right now, not to call you out, Sharon. No close-ups, by the way. Um, <laughs> staff of two. Staff of two. Oh, Jacob, right. Um, in terms of covering events and meetings, I'm not sure, I wasn't sure how much Jacob does with that. Well, they cover for each other. Okay. And share so, so a, he does do meeting reports. Okay. Staff of two right now, and that, you know, depending on availability, could be expanded to have additional coverage. So, this would include, you know, finding staff, training them, getting them up to speed. Um, not, not much more complicated. Any questions on, on that? Okay. 1.4 relates to the question you asked about the studio at the elementary school. So the goal here was to update and operationalize the studio to allow for in-studio multi-cam production. Part of this also includes, um, think, of, think of the production that we have here, Future State, being produced from the table over here, going out over the, um, over the internet into the studio. It would essentially be through what's called an RTMP stream, piped to the studio directly. From there, it would be broadcast out to the channel, which I, th I think it's 192 for the government. I can't remember if it's... 192, 194, I believe. Yeah, what? Us and 197. But one of them is used for government. I can't remember if it's 194 or 192. But either way, this would be streamed. It would stop at the studio, then go out to the, to the public. Um, so that's how this interface would happen. The other thing about the studio is that we did do a walkthrough to figure out of all of the equipment that's there, that's been there and accumulating over the years. Um, and with the goals that we have in mind to revitalize the studio, what equipment needs to stay, what equipment needs to go, what do we need to uh, acquire to make that happen? Um, <laughs> my recommendation on that is, is fairly simple. It's, you can see it on slide 13, which is really the majority of the equipment, and I know this is going to be hard to hear, the majority of the equipment um, is unusable and obsolete and will not serve a purpose in a future state. There's technical reasons for that. 
Um, but the fact is, in a modern operating studio, it, with the exception of that camera, this uh, microphones like the shotgun microphones that, that the studio owns, uh, in one of the editing bays, nothing else really in my recommendation would stay. Uh, so, Aaron, yep. A question. Um, the town recently allocated some money for the purchase of additional equipment. Don Kelly, does the, uh, does the studio over in the elementary school, have we spent much of that money on new hardware? No? Okay. So, all right. So, that, 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 that was the answer I was hoping that, because with Aaron's um, concerns over the um, usability of the uh, hardware you have there, I was I just wanted to make sure that the money we allocated in the last, uh, I think it was a year and a half ago, um, hadn't really, we well, hadn't spent on and stuff and we couldn't and use. And that money also was, I'm presuming, what we would be funding the modifications. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about the banquet. Yeah. Yeah. What's the banquet? Is that up? This, this, this yeah, is the, the oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. And then yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, banquet hall. Yeah, the scope of, of what I have here is this room only. I, I didn't include uh, upstairs. Yeah. Okay. And then my other question is, you're on 1.4, you mentioned middle school. Did yeah. you mean school over here in Brookfield? I meant wherever the studio yeah, is. It's it's not, it's not it's elementary. Elementary, sorry. Okay. Yep. Yep. No, that's, elementary. That's, that's, that's what I figured. I yep. just wanted to... Thank you. Uh, yes. Did you know you had a studio at the middle school? No, I'm kidding. I just got it wrong. <laughs> um, it's not a very big middle school, so I'd be very surprised if they had space for that. Right. So, so you know, the, the approach here, the plan of action, you know, in my recommendation would be, you could hire a contractor to remove everything, or you could do it yourself. But I honestly, I mean, that would be the step that I would take. And I know there's some sensitivity sometimes around that sort of thing, but I can tell you that. If we don't do that, we're simply just storing stuff, and that's not useful to anybody, okay? You're not including the telly. No. No, but that, it may be I that. Mean, I know we have tape <coughs> Right, that's, that's what I mean. I, right. The, I believe there's a Victrola. I'm just kidding. Maybe. <laughs> there, is an, there was an Atari, what was the, uh, no, uh, uh, so old graphics computer. computer. <laughs> Our yes. The original <laughs> that should not be thrown away. <laughs> no, no, no. I heard that go Yeah. Totally agree. I've actually had people look at it and say, ooh, can I buy that from you? Yeah. I just want to point out that most of the equipment he's talking about discarding is over 25 years old. Yeah. That's, okay. I just wanted to make that, sure that, that sure. was clear. That's the yeah. equipment that we had. Like you said, the box stuff, not where it's 64. Yeah, no. I just. Hold on to the other stuff longer and I'll go. I just know that when this goes out, the question will come up and pe some people will remember that we allocated money to buy new hardware and I wanted to make sure we, but I, I wanted to clearly establish from my own understanding whether we, whether we, that money was spent wisely or whether it's spent on it's thrown out. It as wasn't as spent was unwisely. It's, it's, it was not. Because <laughs> it wasn't the spent. The stuff that you're going is, that's old, it was not purchased with the money we received. No, no, no. That's no. It. Great, the great point. The things we purchased with that money, I believe, are the new microphones we use some of that money for. Yes. And that's, that's it. The nice gooseneck microphones that we've been using, mm -hmm. that is the only thing we have spending. So 90% of that money is still there. Kelly, does it make sense to just quickly summarize how funding for cable access works, or should I, do you want me to do that at the end? Because there could be some questions about that. Um, why don't we do it at the end? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that's 1.4. And um, 1.4 is all for bringing the recording studio or the recording area of the elementary school studio up to speed. Usable. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Usable. All right. Um, 1.5 is related to a public awareness campaign to promote the relaunch of the channels. As a marketing person, I couldn't leave this out. Um, so what we've done is drafted a, a, a plan that includes um, social media posts as well as a press release. And you know we can explore other ways to reach um, your residents. I don't know. You will know better than I the best way to reach your residents. So whatever those channels are. I, I, okay, we'll do the yellow I sign. I was going to say, I know someone with a big yellow sign in town who is very, we'd be very happy to hear when this gets fully online. Good to know. Good to know. So, um, 
this isn't just cable, so it would be like YouTube or anything. It's like up that. to you. I mean, that's at the discretion of. Well, we have a YouTube channel, so right. when we go to the YouTube channel, if you need live stream, there's, there's, a, there's a possibility. Well, it depends on what kind of technology you right. get and what kind of services you come with it, right? So if, if we want to have a Roku channel that's a Brookfield channel, and people will start to you to right. access it as well if they don't have cable. In full HD, by the way. Yeah. 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 I haven't had cable on all Well, yeah. so imagine being able to put your TV on at home and getting this meeting live right. in full HD, yeah. right? Even yeah. even though you don't have the cable. Yeah. Just Yep. Absolutely. All right. Um, so the yeah, 1.5 is related to just uh, making sure the public is aware that it's back. You can get involved. You can watch. You can engage. Um, that's that's the purpose there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So please let me know what other channels make sense for a public awareness outreach. You know, for the town of Brookfield. I just don't know what those and channels have, are. You have a diagram at the very end. Yes. Yep. Pretty much shows what you just described. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep, it does. So. Um, it's tough to see on my printout because I did it on two slides per, per sheet, so, but I, I, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see it there. I, I, it's difficult to, to speak to it, but, but let me know. You already did. I was just yeah, right, it. right. It shows exactly what you were Yeah, that's right. Um, so as far as the, the financing of cable goes. Yeah, so um, cable access financing is provided, the, the main source of funding primary source of funding comes from the cable provider through money that is um, uh, a charge that's included on a monthly cable bill. So, uh, you know, here you have Spectrum. On that bill, when you look at the itemization, there's a line item that says something like PEG broadcasting or cable access or some French might be, there's also a franchise fee. So those little charges, those little, maybe they're a dollar or less here, I don't know. That is collected by Spectrum. And then I think here it's once a year, they transfer those funds to the town. Those funds can only be used for the purpose of public access. You could not look at those funds and say, um, no offense to the water problem, we, we could fund a secondary operator. No, you cannot. Like It cannot be used in any other way. It can't even come before town meeting. For the town to vote and say, let's use these funds for this. It's not, it's against the law to do that. Mm -hmm. Like YouTube or anything can be used for that? Uh, well, it's incidental to the actual access to the cable, so it's, it's acceptable. Yeah, okay. that's right. It's if a good it's way to just to put it on YouTube, no. Right. But if it's going to cable and it's so incidentally. You have to put it on cable and open up the pocketbook. Pretty much, yeah, that's exactly right. It has to go on. And the, that money yeah. has to be allocated at town meeting. Why. Right. Yeah, war articles. So we've been collecting peg money then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning of the contract. So if, if you had consecutive contracts, you know, I knew this number in the last meeting, but I don't remember it off the top. Like 10,000? I'm thinking like closer to 300,000. There's, there's, there's a decent oh. amount of money. And there that's not the money that we've allocated. allocated. We've, we've allocated. Uh, we 90 last year or 90 this year. We have 180. We have another 300,000 sitting in the bank. So which will left. just sit there. I mean, I don't know if it's an interest bearing thing or not, but it will. The only thing it's doing for you is sitting there. Right. Yeah. So, so, so that's why we're allocating it at the meetings the last two town meetings. Yeah. So that we can work on this. Yeah. Mr. Keller, you had a question? I actually probably got it. You helped point to me. But uh, so that's the question I was going to ask. So okay. No worries. worries. <laughs> Um, I think that's that's the summary of the of the recommendation and what the plan is. I you know I'm happy to to take any other questions about this plan or about cable access, um, but that that sort of wraps it up. Uh, you'll see that in, in also in my recommendations. I I don't I don't I look for the appropriate um, solutions for the for the given scenario and situation. So. The point in saying that is you're not going to see me recommending the lowest of the low quality, low price things because it's cable access. It's not how I view it. I view it as there's important information that needs to get out to your public and we need to do it in a way that gives them access 
and does so in a way that is high quality um, so that they're getting the most out of this. That's my view and that's my philosophy on how, how I would go forward with something like this. And that's what I've done in Spencer. Um, I've been there for more than 10 years as the, as the general manager of that studio, of that station. And the board, my board there, it's a nonprofit as well. It's not part of the town, it's, sep it's a separate entity. Um, has encouraged me and has seen me doing that and the benefit is, is you know, seen on the other end of that as well. So that's why I do that. Could you go into the difference between the structure Spencer uses for people access as far as organization goes sure. and the way we do it, just so people are clear on that? Yeah, I think in the way that, um, I, I might be overgeneralizing, but in the way that the fire department is a department of the town, your cable access department is a department of the town, operated by the town as a, as a government entity. And that, um, that's pretty common. Um, the other sort of structure is that uh, the cable access can be its own nonprofit organization independent of the town. Reporting structures to the town don't exist. Nobody is reporting to, for example, the chair of the selectmen because that, in, a, in the view of um, an organization that might be set up that way, could be construed as a conflict of interest. In other words, maybe I work for a town and something sensitive is coming up and I don't want that on cable access. So I can say, Sharon, go home. That's, in my view, that's, you know, that's why you would set up a separate entity in that way. I'm not saying that would happen. I'm just saying there's reasons to be separate and there's reasons to be together. Mm -hmm. So those are really, are the, the other way would be to um, outsource completely. And I've seen, I've seen, very rarely I've seen towns do that. We outsourced completely in Lanesboro. And it worked, oh. and it worked out beautifully. Mm. It was a private company that came and did all of our, of our cable access. And we had a set of homes set up to what you're Okay. And it worked beautiful. R2D2. R2D2, yes, that's right. The little, that's right. And the same with the screen and the back. It worked really, really well with residents. And we knew they were watching because they called the residents. Hey, I just heard what you said. I want to be on the speaker. Right. Trying to think of. There was one to tell you left out how the nonprofit is funded. The nonprofit is funded um, through a memorandum of understanding with the town. The town has an agreement with the cable access operator or the nonprofit that basically says we will transfer 100% of these funds to you to operate for the sole purpose of operating PEG. Um, that does have to be moved at town meeting and that's a fairly new rule of the last five years I would say prior to that. The town would get the check from Spectrum. The town would deposit it and immediately write a check to the cable access operator. And that it, it's just a pass through. It's simply a pass through. But that's the only connection between the nonprofit and the town is that memorandum of understanding. And Spencer, it happens to also say that we're going to cover Board of Selectmen and annual town meetings. That's it. Now we do much more than that. But as far as the MOU is concerned, that's what we're obligated to do. So I'm going to go a little bit outside the box here. With this money and TVs, would we be able to put another TV and have it streamed out there and use it and fund that towards this budget? If it's used to be put on cable, yes. Great stipulation. Yeah, that's the stipulation. It really does need to be primarily it used for cable. Primary yeah. use has to be for cable access. I think, so, I, I, Brad, are you getting to streaming town meeting from upstairs down to here? Right. It's like, I, I mean, if we stream town meeting out to the, uh, the cable channel, then we could probably cover that. It's just, I think that's something we'd have to discuss yeah, because we need, we need the stuff. I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat the scenario? I, I, think, I, I think I misunderstood. Also, also, I'm doing a setup in the true ballroom. Yeah. Moving to even eventually doing town meeting. Town, town meetings is in the annual and fall town meeting or meeting government yeah, meetings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, luckily, the way that I'm sort of specking this is based on network interfaces and um, signal routing. So basically what that means is we can send any signal anywhere. In other words, a camera that's running upstairs can be sent to our production table down here. Mm -hmm. A microphone that's upstairs can be routed to our mixer down here. 
the image from camera two can be put on the TV instead of the image of my laptop with a simple click. Mm -hmm. So that's the signal routing we have planned. Um, the other thing you could do is if town meeting got full, you could do overflow right. and it would be covered live and you can have two-way communication. So that if you had a secondary um, or assistant moderator or assistants to be able to handle public input, part of that could be done down here and they would hear it upstairs and see it on TV as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my recommendation includes the ability to do that should it come, but not actually installing that. It's more of a when it's ready to be plugged in, we can plug it in. Yeah. The uh, for proposal one dot two would um, would the um, I'm going to call it the mixer station. We talked about putting over on the wall mm -hmm. over there. Would that have the necessary capability and ports to um, handle the likely expand the likely idea of um, doing a setup in the ballroom, or would that require additional no, it would. plug and ports? No, nope, it, it does, because the signal routing is, is going to be um, done through what's called a video hub. And I think I'm recommending a 20 by 20, which means you've got 20 inputs. Mm -hmm. So 20 cameras or, or 20 computer, any kind of video input that can go to 20 different locations. Yeah, all independently switched. Yes, and, and I can send input seven to output 20. Right. Or I could but send them all to the same place. It doesn't, so you've got. It, but it going upstairs puts us over that 20 limit, then we're exceeding it won't. the hardware. Yeah, you are in that so case, but it won't. That's what, that's what you're saying is that we're, we're prepped for expansion. Yes, yes, because this is going to grow, and I'm aware of what, you know, that upstairs was happening. And things change all the time. You might want to add a TV in an office. I mean, I don't know what you would do, but like it's you, you're going to be able to do it very easily. Mm -hmm. so this okay. has been a, a, a great um, presentation. I'd like to recommend the board under advisement due to the heavy lifting of the conference. Um, and I'd like to thank you for your presentation. I am open to that. Any, uh, any other questions from the uh, other members of the board? It's like I know it's, it's like I'm probably just going to make some notes here and break this all down onto one page because I sure much easier to digest when you're boiling. There, there is. I mean, the functional specification could be useful. We've got a, sort of a one-page yeah. kind of functional spec. I don't know if they can the, get uh, that. The, the computer yeah. person, he said, "Ooh," and then I, and then I <laughs> dial it down, dial yeah. it down. All right, so thank you. Today. I appreciate the opportunity um, to to engage on this, and I'm excited to see what happens yeah, next for you. Okay, are we do we, is that okay? Do we have time for that? Uh, Mr. Holcraft, I'm gonna allow a couple minutes for this and uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. And real quick. Are you set are you gonna have this set up in the elementary school when we do our annual town meetings? That's what we do it right now. It's in the elementary. Are you gonna have it set up for us over there? Uh, I'm not full I, I mean I know the studio space. I don't know, I haven't seen where you actually hold town meeting. Uh, in, in terms of its both physical distance and the layout of the space. Um, so I can't say definitively that once we do, it, it, should you decide to move forward, once we do those upgrades that you'll be able to go live from town meeting. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's possible we may need to explore a few more um, equipment uh, needs for that, but I mean, that's what we have. Well, but, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that presumes that we continue to have town meetings there. The thought is, is that if we put, we would, if we put the setup in upstairs in the ballroom, then the intent would be to hold town meeting there rather than the elementary school, eliminating the need to do broadcast from there because the meeting's not in, wouldn't be in the elementary school anymore. Well, that only depends when the upstairs gets done or beforehand, beforehand and well, we gotta make sure we get handicapped accessibility. Well, that, well, that, well, that, and that's why we're wiring this room and, and, you're, and that is a concern. Yes. And the th but my thought is I am loath to invest in a fixed setup for the elementary school um, as an interim solution. I could see us acquiring maybe a, another camera, maybe a, little, a few more microphones um, to provide better broadcast coverage there, and then we could look into about getting about how we could get that over to there. But I think we need to decide how long we need to decide a time frame because I don't want to put a lot of money into setting us up to stream from the elementary school if we are only going to be there in for two years. So uh, I, you have a good. 
it's a good question to bring up. You know what? I, I, I do. I, 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 there is a way to do that in, okay, in, in I, terms I, I, of. We got one more minute because I. Okay. All right. Time. So so I can I can expand on that more later. But there there would yeah. be an intermediate way to do that. Sorry. Did you have one more? Yeah. One when, more? when, where, and how, and how much money are we going to get? Are we going to get this thing going? It's been six years that we've been on. We keep talking. So when are we going to? When this? When is this going to happen? Can anybody answer that? Uh, let's see. Uh, I believe the, the proposal we have in front of us would allow us to broadcast the select board meetings in real time. Um, I would say the ability to get uh, where we are now, with the room and the equipment we have now, the cha I believe the challenge is we're recording the meetings, it's getting the meetings edited and into the system for broadcast. Kelly, do you have any insight into uh, where we are in that or whether we're they're being edited and, and uploaded on a regular basis. Up, uploaded to YouTube. YouTube channel. Right. Uh, what, about the YouTube? what about what about getting it onto the PEG channel? Right. That is something that this was supposed to alleviate. Okay. Yeah, the plan covers that. You've got to adopt the plan and then commission the work to get that done. And then you gotta do this, you gotta set up the studio with all so, the equipment. So I'm I'm gonna make a motion to go ahead and adopt the plan. I, I don't think that's a good idea. Think that you need to, to digest it a little more and, and wait and talk about it in more in depth. And tonight's not not on that time because yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Because it's it's you don't have the budget in front of you because the page wasn't included in all of the packets. That's true. Um, so and that's that's I printed it. I don't know. I guess the page didn't print it. I'm not the column, but I don't know what happened to that. So it, it's available, but we don't have it in front of us, and there wasn't time to actually. But okay. that's, that's just a mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would like, I would be more comfortable thinking about this more, especially the, uh, the severability, because I think you said 1.1 is done, and you said 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 could all be executed independently. But 1.2 and 1.4 are the big ones. 1.3 is recruit volunteers. Yeah, yeah. And, Vol and so, yeah. so to my mind, it's, it, it should be on us to decide whether the prioritization of 1.2 and 1.4, whether we want to phase it, whether we want to try and do them both at the same time. And I think also we should probably have another discussion to talk about how we're going to get the, the meetings that we're already recording onto the PEG channel that's now actually broadcasting. Now that we have an available channel. Yeah. It's I, mean, like, I mean, the portion of it that I, I think we need to move forward on, I don't think we need to move forward on it tonight, because that's not the only thing that we I think the hardware is a no-brainer. Regardless of everything else from the standpoint of whether we're doing it with the nonprofit, whether we're doing it with the respective the volunteers, whether we hire a third party, it's going to be virtually impossible to go with the hardware um, Yeah, and there's hardware components included in this, I think it's 1.2, and also the studio, but I right. feel I'm like this space. I'm, I'm thinking the, the 1.2 portion of yeah. the town hall. We did some shelf it for today, but I'd like to revisit the plan in phases at a minimum to mm -hmm. start moving forward on the parts that are are functionally non negotiable if we're going to be able to, to do this in the future. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So. And then. And then I, my, the notes I have here for, section, for the quotes on section 1.2 say that will be higher, estimates are low. Did I, is that, is that what you tried to convey to us about the uh, budget? It's higher, it's gonna be it higher. It will be higher? Yeah. Okay, so I, I think for us to, uh, uh, so we'll wanna. Can, we'll, can we get that information sooner rather than later? So that needs to go out to the government. You need to first yeah. decide what equipment you want and if you're going to be upgrading Procurement changes if we're operating Telview as opposed to getting new equipment to replace Telview. So if it's an upgrade, we don't have to go through procurement. If it's not, then we do. We can't go through procurement. I won't know which section of 30 I need to use. We'll leave it wrong. So I, you know, I, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, and I, I want to the information for wrong purposes because we don't know how we need to procure unless we know what the ball is. Right, which we do because we have we have some folks for, for fitting out the room. Right. Um, but I, I got those today, so I, oh, well, no, Aaron shared them with me today. So 
Okay. We need some data. We need some perfect data. Yeah. 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 And then for the, um, for, for the estimates, if you could um, give us an idea of the hardware versus installation split, because my thought is, is that if most of the cost is in the hardware, then we buy some hardware and we realize we don't have the right hardware, we know, okay, there's going to be another hardware hit. If a lot of it's insulation, then we get the right hardware and we need to move it around. We know it's going to cost us to move the existing hardware around, but changing out the hardware may not be expensive. So that, that right. gives us a feel for where do we need to get it right. If the hardware is expensive, we got to get that right up front. We don't want to buy the wrong stuff. If it's laser expensive, we want to get it installed in the right spot. Mm -hmm. Just help us. The hardware is more than the installation. Right. How much? How much more is what I'm trying? <laughs> we'll to have say. to break it down. For I, that, I, but I, it is. I, I, I understand. Yeah. I don't need. To, I'm not expecting it to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, thank you. I appreciate all the time. All right. All right, and thanks. Advisory committee, thank you for your patience. I did not I did not expect we would be getting to this portion of the program at 7.30. I apologize for... Um, we should go number one. So okay, all right, so, so, so do, you, do, you, do you need to return from your recess? Yes, do you need to return from your recess? Yes. Yes. Okay. You call us. Uh, I, but, but you need to you need to declare your back that you're back in session and your recess is over. We're back in recess, yes. All right, excellent. All right, thank you. I did that while the other stuff was going on, but that's all right. Oh, okay. Publicly, I've done. All right. Yeah. My just my thinking is that it should be something that everyone can hear, so everyone knows that you're transitioned back into session. All right. So, fiscal year 24. How we do and fiscal year 20, and, and we use that discussion to inform ourselves on fiscal year 25. I know that I know that we had uh, I know that I sat in on one of your meetings and um, and enjoyed enjoyed copious feedback, <laughs> which is fine. It's like I, I I know what it's like to be at the advisory committee and it's. Uh, I think we all do. I mean, basically, mm -hmm. everyone here has been on the advisory committee at some point in time. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we had a discussion in July mm -hmm. where we sort of debriefed. That was the first time we met since the town meeting. Um, uh, basically, just summarize how we broke out the discussion. Was one is you know calendar, format, process, responsibilities, uh, you know what level of cooperation between all the various entities, how we communicate, areas for improvement, good points next steps. That's sort of how we tried to break it out. And everyone had varying opinions. I think there were three or four things we thought maybe were, were um, salient in all of the time that we, we had talked. So I'm going to let the members sort of say their piece as far as what they felt. And mm -hmm. I'll come back at the end if something has been missed or, again, you know, whatever, we're going to try to respond to the feedback. Um, but again, all of you have been in the advisory committee's seats at some point in time. The, I think the thing, the difference is that we had a much smaller group this year through attrition, lack of being able to find replacements. So um, things were, you know, even though things went fairly smoothly, it was, it was fairly hectic also because we just didn't have a lot of bodies. And uh, that was very difficult as far as scheduling and um, trying to coordinate with departments, et cetera, for you know, in-person meetings. So that's go ahead and um, you want to go in terms or? <laughs> um, I guess the biggest takeaway was that we just want to try to streamline the process a little bit and make it more efficient because I think um, Lots of boards and committees are having a hard time getting volunteers and keeping volunteers, but the amount of time and energy that went into the budget the last few years um, doesn't lend itself <laughs> to keeping people <laughs> on the committee. Um, and I think some of that is maybe processed internally on the committee, and some parts of it are maybe the coordination overall with the select board and the Administrator and the departments, mm -hmm. um, and I think we would like to see more cooperation and more prioritization of making that process a little smoother. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, one specific takeaway that I remember we talked about back in July was 
Um, I think my question is sort of for Kelly, which was for the calendar, like there was some talk about making town meeting a week earlier than it has been. But we didn't understand what the reasoning behind doing that was when we already seem to have a hard time getting the budget ready for like what the first week of June this year. Why would you want to have it the last week of May instead of the first week of June? Because you have until June 30th to spend your budget, to set your budget. We're not in the COVID year anymore, which allowed us an extension. So if you set your meeting for the last week of May, it gives you a lot more wiggle room if something happens to prevent it from happening. If you push it out to June, the last week of June, you notice you, you, you run up against your notice limit, right? Because you've got to post and you've got to have notice and have everything done. Can you give me like an example? Like a, like, like, yeah, like what's an example of something that would make that like situation come up that would make it harder? So if if you had um, your meeting set, say you had it for the last week of May. And something happened to the school. I don't know. The roof collapsed. Now you don't have any way to close meeting. If that's happening in June, you can't reset the meeting because you have to go back and repost everything. Got it. So it's just a matter of giving us a little bit of a bigger safety net. Mm -hmm. Kelly, so, what is so the, the actual meeting itself? That was my question. Yes. yes. To schedule the actual meeting. Yes. Yeah, it's a safety net right? to make sure that we have. We have enough window if there's a catastrophe to have a meeting later in June. Yeah. Kelly, what is, what is the requirement for posting the ATM? Two weeks? One week for an annual town meeting. One week? Yes. Okay. So anything beyond the middle of June is getting really tight for our. our it's, risky. it's very risky business. Yes, that's very risky. what I what I, yeah, that's I mean, what I'm trying to understand. So. June isn't bad. Okay. It isn't bad. We had it on what, June third or June first. We had it the week. Yeah, it was it was the very Sunday beginning. Of, it was the it was like June third ish. It was the Friday after Memorial Day. June first. And so okay. Yeah, that's what and then I guess and, and the question I have for you, Kelly, Which is, is fine. That's, that's a fine. Okay, so there's no you're not you're not advising the uh, the town to. Move the uh, move the annual town meeting to before Memorial Day, or, you're, you're, oh. or you or you don't see any burning, you don't see any thing driving us to want to do that. Might be a better way to say it. No. Okay. No, it's just it's just to make sure that we have a big enough window if there's a catastrophe and we can have the town meeting within a statutory time. Okay, and I know I know so we have the one talk budget. Not fun. Yes, I know we're moving. I know it, over my time on advisory committee over the last five six years, where the uh, annual town meeting has gone from middle of June to the beginning of June. Yeah, yeah. and that's fine. So and that's all. Like, yeah, it's it's I, I, it spot. sounds like I'm not hearing any appetite for moving the town annual town meeting to before Memorial Day. Which effectively it would have to it would basically have to move up two weeks because we can't I cannot see us having a Memorial Day weekend. That just doesn't fly because people aren't available. Oh, it doesn't. It's like unless 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 we get someone to throw a barbecue. <laughs> but setting that aside, so it's like, and I think two weeks would be a a bit of a lift for everyone involved. So so Caitlin, I I think the answer to your question so is the end of the calendar we're good on. What's that? The end of the calendar we're good on. Okay, I I, yeah, I, so I think we're not trying to push it up. Keeping it the first week of June. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I will say that I, I think the um, board was um, a little late to getting its review of the budget done and uh, making its thoughts known. And so that's something that I, I intend to uh, pay a little more attention to uh, in this case. What's that? That, is, that has been traditional, and I know we keep trying. So I'm hoping that this coming year that the select the budget will be close to the first one in. So I hope. No, I'm, I'm, I'm more talking about us, uh, the select board reviewing the entire budget, not not just its own budget. It's on the agenda many, many times, and there was no discussion of the budget. Many, many I, yes, I, I think we declined to put the effort in to go over it line by line as as we needed to, and so and that's what I'm saying. We need to 
make sure that we, we focus and do that so that we can make our recommendations so that then we can compare, so that we can compare our recommendations to yours, you can compare yours to ours, and we can decide is there a serious disagreement here or is there just slightly different points of view and we can find a number that we can converge on and jointly recommend. Right, and I, and I fully agree with that. And I also know that everyone has busy schedules on the select board and that um, you do have a lot of financial experience also so that you do put the time in. I think the question should, should pop up fairly readily as far as whatever needs to be done. So I, I applaud your I mean, my, my, my thinking is, speaking for myself, is that it's like I know in the past with the advisory committee, um, I, I had always targeted um, doing, getting the operating budget mostly done by the end of March. And with the thought being, yeah, stuff happens, people come back and say, yeah, my vendor just raised their prices, I'm going to have to raise my, I'm going to need more money next year. And that's fine. That can, that can be handled um, through April and the beginning of May. Uh, um, Kelly, do you think that we could, that, these, that uh, you could have a fairly complete budget to the select board by the end of March for us to review? Uh, do you think that's a reasonable ask? I mean, I know stuff happens and because everyone goes looking for you. Yes, I can absolutely have it by the end of March if I get the information I need. Okay. When you need more okay. information, I would need it probably by the first week of February, and then I can have the budget done. However, with a caveat, I'm working on the budget that intensive, and the things will slip. Mm-hmm. It's oh, you good. put that so nicely. Thank I know. It's going to take out some of the time frame for getting the budget to the department this year? It was supposed to be February 1st, but I don't think we got that. Yeah. 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 And another thing we sort of talked about was having um, at least the framework of the budget, like maybe not every number perfect, but knowing what the budget accounts are going to be so we're not like changing everything around multiple times that we did last year for technology and this year for electricity. None of that has changed. I'm not changing anything else. Perfect. So, so those are staying the same, and but the, the um, I didn't want to do both of them the same year because that would be like just backhanding everybody. It was so big and so new that it would have been very, very hard to get all the, the data. And and as it was splitting it into two years, it was still a struggle for people because it was a learning curve, right? So when I get the budgets from the departments, I'm still expecting them to include what their tech is and what their electric costs are. And then I'm going to pull those out again and put them into its own line item. Which is kind of why I think the advisory committee may want to wait and start working off of a budget that Kelly provides rather than Department spreadsheets from the departments that aren't necessarily accurate. Well, they are accurate, and, and I'm perfectly well, okay with that. None of the budgets we have from departments are accurate. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Yeah, Not a single one. Right, and I think that was just a question of the transition and the first year. Because they all had their electricity and they all had cola and so every single one. Well, some of the previous year's numbers were incorrect. And we used to vote on every single department yeah. four or five times before. So, I mean, we're utilizing Excel for this. I mean, mm -hmm. we should be able to share them and view all the modes so they can. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I actually did it. I locked it so that they could work on their own column. Gotcha. So we did that, but then there was changes after. Right. That. So, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Like the framework, not just like the actual. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the issue was is that the information, I'm not sure where it came from. I mean, because normally in past years, the cabinet pulled the information from the previous years out of the data, 
I put it in the spreadsheets that were sent to the department heads. I don't know what the process was last year, but we had some problems with the previous year's data. So we, we had one gentleman, yeah. unfortunately, who he put in his increase and he was pulling off the wrong numbers so he actually gave himself a decrease in the salary and that screws up a couple of times and you know it's just that was I'll take the I'll take the hit for that one. That was entirely my fault. I did not pay special. And when I opened it up, it linked automatically to my spreadsheet so it looked perfectly normal. And when they opened up their spreadsheets, it was gone gray. And I did not know that because I couldn't see it on their end. Mm -hmm. And I looked, they're like, you sent me this and the numbers are wrong, and I'm looking at you know, my computer is going, no, they're not. <laughs> Looks fine to me. So, so that was that was uh, entirely my fault. So, I've already converted right. all of the yeah, sheets. I, I, to I think that will happen this year. Yeah. And, and I, I know we've gone back and forth on that, but it's just unfortunately we were inefficient from the advisory committee standpoint. We were inefficient, and you know, I'll take the responsibility for that, or, or all of us will. But I just don't think we need to have that coming this next year because we have the systems in place for this in the third year now I think that Kelly is, is preparing the budget and then submitting it for our recommendation other than the other way around. So mm -hmm. I mean we should have much many fewer situations uh, that have, have issues like that, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So last year you wanted me to send you every budget that I got back and people were editing them and resending them and so you were getting inundated with emails with all of these budgets. Do you still want that or no? We'll have to take that up for discussion. I, mean, we're, we're, I, I hear what uh, Caitlin was, was saying this morning. Maybe we should just wait until you get your final thing prepared. Uh, I could send the final budget and all of the correct departmental requests, which may not match what the final budget recommendations are. Right. But, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be changes happening. Right. Right. And then you get it all at once and then a match. Yeah. I think I'm not going to speak for everyone now. Yeah, and that way if you want to meet with one of the boards because your question is about why you're asking for an increase. Yeah, and I know from my experience on advisory committee that when we got the department, the, the page with the department budget on it, that it would have uh, for example, it would have fiscal year 23 budget, actual, fiscal year 24 budget, actual, and then it would have fiscal 25 requests, and there'd be a blank there. Mm -hmm. But the advisory committee would get a view of the last two years' budget and amount and the actual expenditure. And so you won't have that by 24's expenditure. Well, don't, going into 25, you're right. I may, I may be missing. You're halfway through the year. Yeah, you're halfway through the year. It's like, maybe it was like two years prior. Like fiscal year. So, so you already have all that in your spreadsheet, so I don't know why you want that again. Well, the I, where, where would we have that? The spreadsheet that I saw when I started here that you had went back multiple years. But that only. So but the, the, the budget, the again? budget sheet that was presented to town town meeting had budgeted amounts. It did not have actual expenditures from prior fiscal years. It only had budgeted amounts. For and where? I, For when? Um, you um, what we prepared for the uh, would have if we were doing the fiscal year 24 budget, it would have this is the advisor, when the advisory is yeah. The, when, when advisors prepared the budget for the warrant book, yeah, we would we would not have any actual expenditures in there, we would only have budgeted amounts, okay. And so, and I think advisory is used to having that is being able is that to see the what you want? well, well, I and, and 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 that's what I'm getting to is. If that's the information you want, there may be a more efficient way to deliver it to you, where separate from the budget request, where maybe Kelly can send a report and say, for the for the police department, here are all their accounts with the last three years actual and uh, or budgeted and actual expenditure, and that just sent you as informational, and then the current year budget request comes in somewhere else. It's like I'm. I don't know if that's what you want. I don't know if that's going to help you. But I'm thinking that based on my experience, if you just go, if Kelly just sends you the budget request, you don't have that. That doesn't include the visibility into the previous year actual expenditure. And when I was on advice, I remember, because we'd look and we'd say, oh, look, in two years ago, police uh, uh, fire expenses was budgeted for 30,000 and their actual expenditure was 47. They might need more money. 
Whereas his other account, they were budgeted fifty thousand dollars. They spent thirty. Maybe they don't need all that money. And I and I know and I strongly suspect that's the kind of insights you're looking for in the information you get when you consider your recommendations. But Kelly, you already have a spreadsheet where you do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they have a spreadsheet where it's all compared, and that's what they got. They got the, okay. the well, years, the prior right. years, the expenditures, and... Well, I didn't... Uh, that was the, that's the first year I was on advisory, so maybe it, they got it, and I didn't see it, because when it's like, when, when I was on advisory, the only way we got that was in when the department's, in the budget request the department submitted. But, so if, but if you guys are, if Kelly's giving that to you, then, okay, you already get it. Kelly, when do you, what's your deadline for getting the budget request from the department? Um, I was going to ask for them by February 1st, but I didn't actually have anything set in stone because I wanted, I knew we were meeting and I wanted your input on this. So, I mean, if I go by February 1st, I can, I can, what did you want by March? I, I was saying I would like to target having the, um, having the budget, draft. Re <laughs> well, 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 a draft. Have, having the budget, um, the omnibus budget, yeah, the omnibus budget put together and jointly reviewed by select board and advisory by the uh, targeting the end of March. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that can and absolutely. With, and because then, because if, if we get that done, then it's just, I mean, there'll be a couple of depart departments that are stragglers, and yeah. there'll be a couple of things, like I said, where someone comes in and says, "Hey, my vendor raised its rates. I need, I'm going to need more money in the upcoming year," okay. and we can deal with those ones easy in through April and May. Do you want to, so the way that I usually do the budget is this. I pick, we, the selectmen pick the date of the annual town meeting and then I start moving backwards. So the annual town meeting is here. This is what it has to be posted, which means it has to go to town council by, it has to come back to town council by this date. It has to go to town council by this date, which means that I need to have it voted on by the select board here and so on and so on. So we need to pick the date for the meeting and then we can work our way backwards. Okay. It sounds then, like the calendar is roughly going to be the same as yeah. it was last year, but yeah. maybe we'll be more working more efficiently, so it will be if less that works for that's it. That works for me. And I think yeah. that, like, I suggested, like, last year that maybe we have, like, a couple joint meetings, like, one early on, once we have, like, a sort of, even just a rough mm -hmm. draft to, have, like, focus on some of, like, the key issues that might take multiple conversations, like, this year, the library, which we didn't talk about until really like the very last minute. So, um, so like that, that, didn't come, that didn't come before the personnel board or the selection until the very last minute. That wasn't something that we knew about in months in advance. So, I was mean, it's a good example. So, like, was that a budget that we got late? I, don't, I can't with the library. It was a budget was that, that we got late, but the process is that they had to go to the personnel board to get the job description and the, the salary um, discussed and approved. Did but they have uh, personnel board? They absolutely did, yes, they did. So um, six or seven thousand. I know they went to the library the trustees. Right, right. it was for the assistant director and for the increase for the library director. Although um, the library trustees have the right to set the salary before the director. So, so that's, I mean, I, I think that, that's, that's like no one ever told us like that the personnel board <laughs> Looked at the library director's so, salary, like so. It's like there's just seems to be like a well, I don't see why that would be wrong because it's money. I mean, we recommended one thing and then it comes up on the floor as a different number. Well, no, no, no. The, the budget that was presented by the library is the budget that you got. They went to the personnel board, but the. Um, I think it's important information to get if there's a request for a significant salary increase that isn't a cost of living. But they did got it when we got it. Yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't was something that was really done. You remember, what, that, you remember when we did that? It was like a conversation around the, we won't go to here, but let's go here. Right, but that was at the very, that was at the very last we minute. Found that, we found that the request for that, like, I think a week prior to the week prior to that meeting, Prior. What did the person I mean, recommend that as far as the, the salary? The one that we agreed to? I mean, the one that you agreed to. And then it was it was changed on the town meeting floor. I mean, well, what happened on town meeting floor is yeah, not that's something that's in the floor. Yeah. It's like, uh, question. Are you, look, are, are you looking to set the expectation that 
salary, requ salary requests or changes to salary should be requested, the, the request should reflect the fact that they are, that they, that personnel board has assented to the request. Are you looking for that? It, it's like if they request it, they need to have at least be initiated the process with personnel board. But at the personnel board, it, it didn't even come up at the meeting. It didn't have any impact on the meeting. Nobody asked if the personnel board voted. And they actually voted on the job description and the new position mm -hmm. for the warrant office. Does the per, does the person does the personnel board does the personnel are the, is the personnel board involved in setting salary and approving approving salary? I, no, they do job descriptions, and then um, I believe the bylaw says that they are supposed to determine the range based on the scale for the call center. So okay. it's already all documented. Okay. But but the, so the personnel board does not approve races. I don't because. You're going to check. They recommend hiring rates. Okay. And hiring rates. Okay. And in the past, they signed every single person's payroll, which was not part of their, their wage authorization, which is not actually part of the bylaws. So. You mean they signed their conscience effectively? No, so it's the annual wage authorization. Okay. As well as okay. So, so if personnel does not have a role in approving raise requests, does that simplify things here? Because it seems to me you're wondering. You're so if we, I'm sorry, Tom. If we get something, we'll get it to you as soon as we get it, which is what we did. The fact that they went to the personnel board didn't impact the discussion on what the select board voted. Um, they wouldn't have the position approved because they had to follow this path. I think it was sort of an example of like something that I think got rushed at the end that could have been talked about earlier. I mean, there's the I can't talk about it before we know about it. Mm -hmm. No, it was on the first library budget we got. There was the salary increase was on it. Right. With no no background information, no no context. Just like here's the new big number that. Kind of out of our field, and was a pretty big, with one of the bigger but it increases was on, the budget. on the budget sheet that she sent, and that was emailed to you. It wasn't really explained. No, there was no context of how it. Well, how it might have just been said. The number was arrived. Right. Right. No, no, they, they just justified it with the trustees saying well, trustees approved. I think the bottom line is that we just need to have better communication. Yeah. When you yes. get something, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, one of my recommendations was going to be because you messed up, you know, we can track of anything. Can we just set up a shared folder where we put the budget as submitted? So we have the source material. Yes. Yeah, so so there's a shared share folder with just the source material so that it, you know, it's there when it mm -hmm. arrives and it's just it's stuck there and then it's going to get in a Yes. One one thing, channeling my advisory committee experience, one thing that I found challenging was that when these budget requests included the COLA, it made the analysis harder. What I what I would like to consider is There's breaking, no sense in that even putting it on their request. I'm sorry, what's that, Kelly? You want you want them to level fund their own salary and that's not what they want. I, I, uh, I, I would like to see a level funded number in there. If we break out the COLA into a separate column, I think that would be, I think that would be sufficient for an, for an analysis standpoint, or at least if I were doing the analysis, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. It's just that, because if we, it's like, because to me, when I, when I did this and I looked at it, it's like, the number goes up. It's like, okay, how much of that is COLA? How much of that is more hours? And how much of that is a new position? And when I was on the advisory committee, I wanted to understand, it's like when we told them to level fund their budgets, it's like, then we knew that COLA wasn't in there. And if there was an increase, they had more hours either for their existing people or they wanted to hire a new one. But that's not level funded, so I don't understand well, no, because we wanted that when we said level funded, we meant level funded in the sense of 
don't put the COLA in there. But if you needed more hours, if you need more hours for existing or new personnel, put that in there. And that would allow us to that would allow us to sort of flag it and say, oh, they want they they, they want more work capability. That's interesting because that is not what any of them think. When you said you want level funded salaries, you mean they thought they were supposed to put in the number from the prior year regardless of what we need. Okay, and then then that comes back to communication. Is that my, and and the, and the ask was when, when, I, when I was chair and Jeff and I think you did the same. The ask was, if you need more money that's not cola, break it out. How it's like how if you need more hours, how many hours you need new position? What position? How much? How much is this money? Excel can handle that. I mean, Excel can make those calculations for them. Like what? It, what it, what's the you know? level funded salary from last year, what do you want the COLA to be, what do you need for new hours, yeah. I mean, you could break that out, right. like technology, like technology. And, and the, the, whole, the whole point of what at least I have tried to do, what Tom tried to do in doing it, is be more transparent, more communicative with the department as when we get into the positions. We're still training them as far as be as explicit as you can on the budget worksheets. You know, there's a whole system of stuff that being said, you know, please give us your accomplishments, tell us what you want, you know, verbally, but not in the spreadsheet. So it doesn't, as Tom said, you know, sort of mess up what we're doing. I think that's still the way I would prefer. But again, I'm just one person. I would like them to level fund it and say down below, we believe. You know, we don't want the coal, we want coal plus X, or we want 10%, whatever the number is, but don't put it in the spreadsheet. We can figure that out before. So it's still got to be determined on the town floor anyway. So but, you already have all of that information. So you have the prior years, you have what they got last year, asking them to put that on a piece of paper so that you can have something you already have is wasting their time and they feel. I talked to the Can I give you a counter example? I, I, In last year's budget, there was fire wages. And baked into that was a was a big bump for the assistant chief. More than what the the regular firefighters got. And it was approved, but it's like figuring out how much they were asking for the firefighters and how much they were asking for the assistant chief. We had to go, I had to go hunting for that. And so that is that is why when we say if you want more, I'm, I'm not out. saying don't ask them for the explanation. I'm saying don't ask them to put numbers in a spreadsheet that you already have. So ask them for a verbal explanation. This is what we want. You already have the level funded budget. So mm -hmm. start your spreadsheet with your level funded budget, and then if they want something different and they think they deserve a specific goal, we'll just do that one sheet as opposed to having them fill out this. This uh, Excel spreadsheet, and then have a, that has numbers that you already have that information. I wouldn't ask them for something that I already have because it's wasting their time. So let me ask a question. Now, when I told you there are times that I've had to that um, the impression that I'm about a million miles away, I'm um, happy listening to all of this. I just I, I, I don't even want to ask So I need a better. Functionally, first by person in their department, what they're looking to do. Like, 
whether it's a, here's what they're being paid currently, here's what their hours of work is, here's the COBA that I'm expecting to get from my department, here's any other adjustment I need to do either because it means the person is undervalued or not in service, the market adjustment, whatever, whatever it is, excellent performance, and, and this is the adjustment I want to do. And their wages line, they almost need a separate worksheet for the wages portion, and then we can worry about the rest of the budget and the standard format. Is that what I'm hearing? That would work out well, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we so tried to get to do a bottom of the budget last year. So, so, and then I don't think they do it on everything, but I think. No, but on wages, they yeah. should. But I think but I think on wages, I think if we, we keep the current format and then submit their budget, but then we obligate to do the, the wage transparency sheet, and we're going to make sure everybody has. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Just to second what you're saying, I mean, maybe you can chip in. I, I think in the time that I've been on the committee, the, the most time we spent is trying to figure out what the wage line like, consists of, as far as anything else. Most everything else is just, okay, fine. You know, it's, it's not that many items, but it's the. And, and I think that's something you drafted in advance asking for the information, and then yeah. bring it to us and yeah. I don't think now, and then it'll be a better scenario. But that was one of my complaints with it, is that when I have no idea who has what for wages or how many hours they work, so I have no idea if their, if their budget, whether it's low or funded or not, is accurate. And so one of my recommendations regarding that is that work can be done separate and in advance of the expense portion of their budgets. Mm -hmm. The offenders and stuff like that, you're you're, if you're trying to estimate that stuff now for February, and you know even between February and June it might have change. That's problematic. Everybody knows today they want to ask for the for their wage they turn that crap in before Thanksgiving if you have it. You start arguing about it now instead of later. Mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, and they, I mean, and they, know, they, and they know they want more people or more hours for Obviously, this, obviously this is the confusing and contentious portion of it. It's a pile of food up front. <laughs> I like instead, of, instead of the way that we've done it in the past. So, so, and I think that's something we can go to the department heads now and say, when you get an expense budget, you're not going to know it now. But start building your bottoms of budget on your wages. You know how much your people are working. You know what you're paying them right now. Give us what you want to do. And, and tell them we want it before they see it. That works. That works for me. Mm -hmm. And and then by doing that part early, then when they get to the expenses part in January, they've already they've already got part of their budget done. They got the wages part done. So, so hopefully that gives them a reason to start the work out. And they're not going like, to do it. They don't do it by 18 different folks. So first of all, I think we did at least acknowledge that we were going to target 3%. Yeah. First of all, and I think the guidance we give is that we're going to have to say that the discussion we don't need to have it tonight, but I think we should have that discussion between now and Thanksgiving. Are we going to hold the line on that? You know, are we going to pick it up? Because we didn't go to COBOL last year, I think mm -hmm. that's a discussion that we need to have. It's a policy decision that the select board goes in the Right? And I think when we sent out the wage calculation sheet that we're going to ask everybody to do the box of budget, we included that what the selectors recommend COBOL is, and then if people want to have a part of discussion. Did it out before Christmas. Mm -hmm. How's that sound? It's supposed to be for peace. Why don't we do it right after New Year? Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. I, I mean, I, was, I brought that to the slot from last year. I, I don't know if anybody's, for the big departments, if they're out there. And when we asked for it, we got, I got one budget return with the bottoms up and snarky emails from. No. Now, I, I would say that for the fire department, I'm not sure that the uh, that the chief has control as to who shows up for which calls. No, but he knows how much they're each paid. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and he can. But and he so, can. so, so we, so we, so for that, we want some like either a loaded labor rate or just estimated hours for the expectation. The, the total should add up. But so if Lori sends out a spreadsheet with everybody's wages mm -hmm. at the beginning of the fiscal year, I can include that. Yeah. With, the, with the budget and say, here's what we have for me. I think that information can also come in handy lots of other times and lots of other discussions that are happening about different departments. 
negotiating on behalf of the town. Thank you. Not urgent. Um, briefly, we're, we're two hours in and we're on agenda item number three. I understand that's, I, it's like, I, I appreciate it. Um, it seems like every year we're discussing this advisory board, it seems like it's, we're inventing something every year, we're not. Um, the advisory board is supposed to be an, in, an independent board of our town. And now we've got the budgets going to Kelly. The budget should go to the chairman. The chairman should ask questions to whoever submitted that budget, then brings it to the board. They make changes, yes, no, let's get these people in here and analyze it. And then it goes to whoever's doing the spreadsheet, make, let Kelly have the spreadsheet. But Kelly should not be estimating electric and then it takes and gives it to you guys. You guys are the advisory board. You're supposed to be doing that work. She can keep the spreadsheet. You get six budgets approved, give them to Kelly. So on and so forth. That's the way it should be done. You, and it seems like every year we're doing this different. Yeah. The so, bylaws or whatever. So, so they advise, it's the town's budget. Okay, it's actually the selectman's budget. They advise on whether it's a good idea or not. Correct. Okay, which means that the, even though that, that was the process that was followed in the past, functionally, 
it makes more sense for it to originate with who owns the budget and then they can advise us whether it's safe or not. Yeah, but she's already making a spreadsheet estimating the electric before it even gets to the advisory board. So what's the advisory board for? We just let the county make them do the whole thing. I don't it doesn't matter how it's the number we get in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah, but you they're supposed to be so analyzing the budget. I hate to say this. I, I, I hear what you're saying.
which number is that? The oh, number eight? Number eight. All right, we'll need to take that out of order. Can I get a motion? Uh, I make a motion to take the number next. Second. All right, all in favor of taking uh, land easement next, say aye. 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 All right, land easement. Is that the next step? Seventh inning stretch. You thought coming late would mean you arrived right on time. <laughs> we had plans for you, sir. Every, it's always a gamble. Um, hi, I'm Bill Simpson. Hi, Bill. Hey, nice to meet you. Um, hi. I'm here. Uh, did Kelly forward you the legal documents pertaining to the land easement? Um, do you have it in front of you? Okay, great. Um, so. I'll give you the story here. 37 Upper River Street, my parents' house, and also where our business, our offices for the business, has a septic system that was put in at some time unbeknownst to us, it, it, a long, long time ago. Um, the drawing that you should have a copy of, the grayed out area, is effectively where our septic system is on that property and has been forever. Mm -hmm. It also happens to be land that's owned by the town because it's abutting the road. Um, so there's a conflict there. The septic is not in the right place. Have you tried adverse possession? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, the lawyer is going to be quiet. Yeah, there, there's a lot of ways we can tackle this. This the simplest way that we thought of, because we need to get a new, at some point, we need to get a new septic system. This is not critical. We're just trying to plan in advance and get this squared away so I can actually get a system designed and put in for the property. Um, so to do that and to legally create a new plan, we need the rights to have a septic where we have a septic. Um, so uh, to do that, we need an easement from the town to use this piece of property for that purpose. Um, and that's what the drawing is for. Um, so I'm re and it, to do this requires a meeting at, a vote at town meeting, it has to go on the warrant. So what I'm requesting here, is that the select board vote to put this item on the annual town meeting warrant for a vote. And um, annual. Uh, uh, special? Special's fine, right? Either. Whichever comes first. Yeah, this the special's next the next available town meeting. So I don't know if you're planning a special. Yeah, whenever that is, that would be the time. I, I will have to check to see if in the end. Did I already check this? Because I don't remember because it's, it's, you know, yeah. that's not a good time. But um, I may have already express that it needs to go to town meeting, but I don't remember if I, if I checked if it had to be an annual or if it could be a special. Some things have to be at an annual. If, if you can, can you check that just because I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but if otherwise you're so asking. I'm going to make a motion. Can I just make a motion that this be on the next legally easement? Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, any discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor say for putting this on the uh, on the uh, warrant of the uh, next appropriate town meeting. Say aye. 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 All right, thank you. All right, uh, Kelly. Is there anything else that we need to um, take with uh, super urgency? Um, I'm thinking the. The sick bank one. Yeah. Um, are you planning on ending the meeting? No, I, I'm just, I'm, I just want to understand what's important so that if we can accelerate those, then we can get as far as we get from the rest. I just don't want to miss anything well, that's important. Sharon is here to discuss the studio. Okay, but, but so four and six are the important and probably the fire alarm. So let's go through those uh, in order then. So next, I, next on the agenda, in order, proposal for locating uh, Apple Country Radio studio to the second floor of the town hall. Let me adjust the camera. Thank you. I don't know if you've all gotten the letter I sent out in August, but um, have you gotten the letter I sent out in August to the board? Um, this one with the logo on it? Okay. 
I'll give you the short version, uh, just to reiterate this and for the benefit of people who are here. Um, when we started the station, we needed a place to put the antenna in the studio, and Gavit, in the person of Lisa Baker and um, Ray Chesson, president and the treasurer, graciously offered the use of an unused office space at 20 Central. They also allowed us to put our antenna on their antiquated but charming warehouse. And we've been there since 2017. We had hoped to build out the studio there, but then COVID occurred um, once we got our license to, um, to cover, which is the license to start broadcasting. Um, we were able to get the station online by the deadline, but then COVID happened. Our donations dropped off, our volunteer um, group evaporated because of the pandemic. And then, um, at, Don was the one who tipped me off in this, I spoke with Lisa Baker and she informed me that Gavit is going to be selling that building. And that they hope to have it closed by the end of December of this year. So we're not only losing our studio, but we are losing our antenna site. Um, if you'll recall, um, I had asked this board on September to um, issue a notice of reasonable assurance to allow us to put the antenna on the clock tower here. And that wish was granted. We got the notice of reasonable assurance, which is basically a letter saying that the board agrees in principle to allow the antenna to be located on the clock tower. The FCC requires this before we can ask them to move the antenna because we have to get an engineer, um, work out the new site, send it into the government, and then and only then can we move the antenna. But if we don't have that letter, we can't even get that far. Mm -hmm. So this board had agreed to do that. We're still looking, we were still looking for a place to put the studio. Um, the place I'd hoped to put it in was that little newsstand-like building um, next to the um, garden for Tip Top. The building at the time was vacant. It used to be a designer, a interior decorated shop, and it was vacant. So I found out who owned it, and I talked to the daughter of the owner, who is Shelby O'Dayhill. And she told me right straight off the bat, she said, no, we're going back into that building. And the reason I'd asked her was because they'd moved their Montessori school from that building to the Brookfield Inn. She said, no, we're going to reuse that building to put our preschoolers in. So that was out the window. I did a comprehensive search of all the commercial properties in town, such as they are. There is not any available space. Either it was being renovated to be sold or it was already taken up. So I approached this board informally about the prospect of putting the studio on the second floor of this building. At first, I talked to Kelly about the third floor, but it is unsuitable in numerous ways. The first one being that, well, there's no electricity up there. There's no internet. That's a problem that could be solved, but the room is also dusty, it's dirty, and I have arthritic knees, so climbing three flights of stairs to get up there is a no-go. So what I proposed was to go to the space next to the ballroom stage. Um, it's known as stage right, but looking at it, it's on the left-hand side. There is a room there. It's uh, accessible from the ballroom floor and there was a flight of stairs going up to the stage. There's also a tiny room above that, and the only thing that room was being used for at the time I asked was to store some ancient props and costumes, which had been there literally for a decade. So before I even approached the town, I asked Scott Mansfield to come in and ask what the feasibility was to upgrade the electricity for that room and the room above it. He brought his students in. Um, he said it's, it's doable. He even had a rough plan laid out by the time we got through talk. And the understanding was is that his students would provide the labor and Apple Country Radio would purchase the equipment, the equipment and, and supplies. There would be no middleman on the part of the town. We would pay directly out of our own funds. So what I need, and it's outlined on the memo I sent you back in August 11th, was we need for this board to vote to give us permission to use that space for our studio, to grant, for this board to grant us permission to use the space above that room, 
on the third, third level, it's not really in the third floor, but the third level, and to allow Scott Mansfield and his crew to improve the electrical and internet connections for that room at our expense. And then finally, work out a lease agreement with Apple Country Radio according to Mass General Law and the preferences of this board. But first I need to know that this board is willing to sign a letter, again, the equivalent of a letter of reasonable assurance, granting these four wishes as it were. Because without this, I cannot go ahead with any of the other plans and the clock is ticking on our um, need to vacate Gavit. And if we can't find another home for the station, we're going to have to shut down and surrender the license. And that's the bottom line. Is your attaching the antenna to the town hall um, per our notice of reasonable intent contingent on getting the studio into that room? Well, there are ways to do it. If, if I got a studio in another part of town, there are ways using the internet. It's called an STL, studio to transmitter link. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to do that. The equipment costs $4,000. But, you know, things cost money. Mm -hmm. But there's no other place we could put a studio that I have found in town. If we, okay. I, I understand that. It's, I'm just, what I'm trying to understand is this would, um, this would preclude any other use of those two rooms. The room stage right? Mm -hmm. The room of stage right and the room above it. That's correct. The reason is there would be over $15,000 worth of equipment that we currently own that would be moved into that space. Right, and we would, we would not want to risk that. Well, one of the things I would ask for is that there'll be locks put on both of those doors, the one leading onto the stage and the one leading onto the ballroom. And that would ensure um, security for the equipment. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a reasonable ask. Yeah. Um, the uses for the, for the two rooms, the, trans, the antenna would go onto the clock tower, which is at the opposite end of the building. The cable, which would probably have to be about 200 feet in length, would go through the eaves on the third floor, on the same side as the clock tower. Cross this side in the attic and go down into that little room. All it would require is a grommet for that cord to go down and it would connect to the transmitter in that room. And one of the reasons I wanted to put the transmitter there is number one, the fan generates noise. If you have a, a transmitter in a studio, you're gonna hear that whiny sound of the fan, mm -hmm. much as the way it is in the um, cable access studio. Number two, um, I would have to get into the server rack both in the front and the back. And the room next to the stage, that would work in that, in that aspect, but there would be wires coming in, and that would provoke, that we know, that might, you know, present a hazard. Um, where we are now, we have an alcove in the Gavit building, and the wires come into the building uh, across the, the, uh, the, through the eaves of the Gavit building, across the driveway, and directly into the alcove. Mm -hmm. So we have maybe three feet of cable, which is three quarters of an inch thick, going directly to the transmitter and not crossing anybody's path of, of egress or, um, or access. Yeah, well, good deal of how goes with that. Yeah. So I have a yes. question. Because mm -hmm. um, you brought up your other knees. So if something were to happen and you couldn't, like you had trouble walking up there or something, does that limit? I don't anticipate that happening. No, I know you don't. <laughs> yeah. But if it does, I mean, are we in any way obligated to make accommodations for her to be able to get up there? That is a question I do not have an answer. Because yeah, I would say the the current, given the the how we've been able to execute on the uh, platform lift, it seems like the intention would be that um, rather than providing a handicapped or assisted access to upstairs, is that we would. Um, Anything that happened upstairs that someone needed to participate in, it would be tele they'd be doing by telepresence down here, which works for a meeting. It does not work if there's equipment upstairs that you need to physically get your hands on. Well, and I, I also, I also need to put it this way: if we have a lease agreement, we're committed to the space. We're going to have to have a like, I hate to put it, it's a, it's a buyer beware, like if you're, if, if and that would be a clause that for whatever reason you physically can't access it, if you want to it. Yeah. I would just put the short version is that's my problem. It really is. That's, you know. 
that's sufficient. So just another quick question, I guess, and it's probably good that John's here, and I don't remember, I know I've been down there, but why not like where the old police station was in the downstairs? It's too wet, the equipment no, will never survive. Right. Yeah. Enough. It's, it's, it's not suitable. Okay. It's absolutely, and, and acoustics is the least reason. That yeah. downstairs is all cement. I would have to finish out the room and put acoustically perfect. We don't have the budget for that. Right. The room upstairs, may, the, the, the repairs that would be needed are mainly cosmetic and the wiring. Marty, uh, Marty had his hand up a little earlier. Marty, question? Okay. Just a couple of things. First, uh, I would recommend that the board uh, present this to or share and present this to the Town Hall Improvement Committee to see whether or not. Already uh, did it. Yeah, I was, I, yeah, before I raised my hand, she has already done that. <coughs> we, have, we have agreed that uh, we are in favor of any you know, the resolution of the select board. Number two, and most important, is unattended equipment like that should have an automatic fire suppression system. No. 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 Yeah, so I asked the town hall for putting your equipment here in the town hall. There is why, why, I think it why not? Because Gavitt, who is careful to obey all of the um, this, the the code, has not required one of us. Number one. Number two. It's only an, a hundred watt transmitter. That's like a light bulb. That's how much power it draws. Three hundred, and it sends out a hundred watts. That's not a lot of power. Okay. I, I defer to the town hall approval committee. Yeah, I presented all of this to them. The other equipment. And we can certainly make sure that since we have later on the agenda the, uh, the fire alarm contract for the town hall, we can certainly um, uh, consider directing Kelly to make sure that that, um, that, that room is covered. So in case something were to happen to the equipment. In the meantime, you could write into any lease agreement that I have an electrical fire extinguisher in that room charged at all times. In, in that locked room? Yeah. Well, we would, have, we, we would entrust the town with a key to that room. So if they absolutely needed access, they could have it. I mean, yeah, we, would, we would need to make sure that, there were, that emergency services could access that room. Um, the, uh, it, it would have to not be locked so in case the uh, fire department need to get in there in this, in this type of event. What do you mean it, would not, it could not be locked? I'm sorry, it would have, it, the fire department would have to be able to access the room even though it was locked to most people. Might be a bit. Might be I'm, sure that the, I'm sure that the town could arrange that by giving them a key. Yes, and that's what I had. Or if we put some sort of a, a, key, a key padlock on there, I don't know how, you know how that works or what type of design. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so much worried about how we do it. I'm just worried that we, that we understand that, yes, the, ta the town, some, some town personnel would be able to access it and for um, for emergency services purposes, we would want we would not want this to be a room that the police that the fire department could not get into. Of course not. It's like and I, yeah, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think. I, I didn't mean, you know, Gavit, Gavit, you know, they gave us a key to the 20 Central Street room, but the, they had a key, and they also had the only key to the back door. Yeah. Well, so I was gonna say, I, it, it might have been my apartment, but my landlord always had a key to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, Mr. Holcraft. In for, we're, we're two and a half hours in count. Huh? We're two and a half hours in and counting. It's all the quite stuff. I know. Um, putting an antenna up in our antique clock tower, um, that, that could possibly draw a lightning strikes, just like the church in Spencer. They had one in their steeple, and that's, they determined that that's what happened, it drew in, into that steeple. Mm -hmm. I know firemen now on scene when it happened, and that's where the fire actually started. Two, you're going to put cables to our, our eaves troughs. If it did get struck by lightning, that would just start a fire right through this old antique building here. And it would start a fire right through this whole place. And this is a town, this is not a town entity, this is a private entity. And I think the townspeople should take the vote on this. So. Through the I chair? Need to be discussed. Um, I, through the I, chair? I, 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 could, I, could I address these questions? Uh, um, Oh, go ahead. You, you, well, I was going to respond to him and then let you respond. Okay. Is that I, I, I understand your concerns. My suspicion is that depending on the design, it's like the 
I think the town has access to some people with, with expertise on lightning suppression and lightning mitigation. Um, the, I, I understand your concern. I would have to defer to the, um, the Chief Martel about the concerns about the, um, the susceptibility to lightning strike causing a problem with the wire running through the eaves. Um, and, I, and with regards to the allocation of space, I do, I, I understand your point there. Um, Sharon, what, what would you like to say? I've already talked to Chief Martel. There were already three antennas on that tower. The first thing I did, even before going to Scott Mansfield and to Kelly, I said to him, what would an antenna that's putting out a 100 watt signal do to your, to your, um, yeah, to your, to your first responder broadcast? Right. And what he said was, there's a very simple gadget, and I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but what it, it does is it prevents, pro yes. It prevents interference. And those gadgets cost maybe $100 to $200, well within our budget. As to lightning suppression, the antenna company that put our antenna on Gavit also bills in a lightning suppression system. And we did have, we had a lightning strike close to the Gavit building at one point, I recall, early on. And power went out on the whole block. The antenna was not affected. The station was not affected except that the power went out, but the antenna was fine. There was no damage, the lightning did not strike it, and in that building, that was the only antenna on the building. As far as uh, Peter goes, he, he referred to his tech guy, and I told him that because the discussion was going to go to you folks, I would want to pay to have his tech guy weigh in actively on any sort of antenna installation. And finally, the antenna installation the cable is triple shielded so that lightning would not affect it. And I've already mentioned the, uh, the fire suppression system. Mm -hmm. yes, I would, I would. There are stations all over the country that use this system and they put them in buildings of every description. Mm -hmm. And I have yet to hear of a fire started in any building from the antenna if it's installed properly. If installed properly is the uh, is the hinge there. I, I remember when I worked with telephone companies. You can imagine telephone cables all over town. They all converge in one office, and the wires in those cables connect to very expensive electronics. Mm -hmm. So they are very concerned about lightning. It's we like certainly the, would be. The the trick there and, and to share with the town is that if something near if if lightning were to strike in a way that it got into the antenna, there needs to be a way to pull the lightning energy to ground quickly without it getting into the building and trying the delicate electronics and, damage, and risking damage. When we installed the antenna on Gavit, I worked with an engineer to help set up the audio chain inside the, the uh, engineering part. And he recommended a company to actually install the antenna called Industrial Communications. It cost us seven grand to put that antenna up, but it came with all of these safeguards. They did the professional installation themselves. They brought their own bucket truck. And I already talked to them and I said, would you, would you be willing to transfer the antenna from Gavit to this building provided I get permission? And they said yes, and I would be happy to provide that company name to this group if asked. Um, with regard, do you have anything in writing who who has who else has antennas on our building? We that would be that would be the first responders. I believe it would be the EMTs and the fire department. Okay, the police are not party to that. I don't know because well, I don't know if they have their own on their own building now. I know that they did have one on their building that used to be the the ranch house. Yeah, the old police. I don't believe you know. You'd have to ask Peter. He would okay. know. All right. The the, the, the reason, what I'm getting at is um, I w I would like. I would say assurances more directly from them that they basically said, "Yeah, we 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 talked to." It's like yeah, given what Sharon was actually here. I think when she made her original. Was he? Did did did, did he got for? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, fundamentally, I just want to make sure that we that someone who has an interest in those things continuing to run says, "Yeah, we've looked into it. We we are not concerned." Well, he did tell me, and he was at that last meeting. Okay. I mean, if you want a letter from him saying that, I can provide, I can, you know, I, make I, that request. I, and, and, e and, email, and email to the board would be, I think, sufficient just to, uh, to confirm that. Okay. And then do we, do we have any inventory of the antennas? Uh, 
or if, if it's, I mean, it's just town entity, so it's probably like, yeah, go ahead, but we never have a list, I don't know if we ever wrote down a list of who, who we put up antennas for, which departments are oh, attached. Not that I, so, that's pretty much what I figured. <laughs> Peter, Peter might know. Mm -hmm. Again, you could ask him. Yeah. I didn't even get that far with him because I wanted to get the preliminaries done first. Yeah, I, I guess I would say if Peter can confirm that all the antennas on there are used exclusively by um, the fire and EMT department. Why wouldn't they be? No, no, no. I, I don't. I, I expect that's the case, but I'm asking for him to say, yes, I know all the antennas on there, and I know the fire and EMS use them, and for all those antennas, we are, we are comfortable that we are safe from any interference. Well, he already told me how to how to provide for that, and that would be part of a contract that we would sign, Apple Country Radio, mm -hmm. and we would certainly provide a copy of that to the board. Mm -hmm. huh. I mean, if you want to do the work for us, that's fine. I have no objection to that, but you know, I'm I'm trying to let you know that I have already researched all of this and talked to all of the parties involved. But it's like I understand, Sharon, but. Right now, you, I'm, I'm getting assurances from someone who's telling me it's not going to be a problem, so you can give me what I want, and 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 that's not and that's not it, and that's not and Sharon, that's that's how I would treat anyone. I'm not saying you don't. Okay, and so therefore, my, I ask, and so what I'm asking is, you're saying, I'm, what you're saying is, I'm paraphrasing here. I talked to Peter. He says it's fine. So right. I'd like, and so I'm asking, I'd like to hear that directly from Peter. And what I said was I would have him provide a letter. Excellent, thank you. I thought I had said that, but. Okay. Twice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Is Peter uh, an expert on antennas and lightning strikes? I don't think so. Um, I believe as the chief of police, um, uh, Peter Martell would um, be in a position to know if this is something that should be a concern. And if it's something that should be a concern, he would have the interest in investigating it further. And if his tech guy says, no, it's not a problem, it, it won't be a problem, then he's entitled to I was going to say, we have actually like two other things that we're really concerned about the technical aspect of the fire suppression. And one of them is that we don't have the right to be able to use it for the fire suppression specialist. Yes. So if we want to refer that question back to the town hall improvement committee, we could. Uh, and again, I'm going to return to the fact that Scott Mansfield is the guy that inspects on behalf of the town. And so we, and if he's the guy designing the system, I would expect that he would look out for the interests of the town mm -hmm. ensuring that we have adequate mm -hmm. fire suppression. I mean, but, and, just to add, I mean I, and just to add to that, I've already spoken to Jeff Taylor. And he said the ADA, from the standpoint of our nonprofit, would not be a problem. The, the, other, the other angle of concern I have is the allocating of space in town hall to a non-town entity and leasing it out. I believe Brad's done an awful lot of research on leasing and renting the town hall space for right. potential for upcoming use of volume to help support right. the cost. Mm -hmm. Are you going to keep the municipal town hall we speak? I would defer that question to when we actually get into lease negotiations. Right now, what we're talking about is whether or not I actually have permission to do this. Yeah. But, and and I would I would um, say that I would view this a little. It's like I would view this as having some distinctions from a renting out the banquet the, the ballroom for functions, which is a uh, a transient use of the use of the uh, space versus a more longer term. I mean, and I'll just come out and say it. There were I. I Want to, I am concerned about going forward with this. It's like, is there anyone else who feels that they can put that space to use? On an ongoing Well, it's only a three year lease, so if by the time something gets going, then we have to have a discussion whether we want to make a lease or not. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a fair point. It's like, but then, then there's the, it's like, but then there's the risk of incumbency. It's like, it's in there, do we want to turf them out? We well, absolutely have the right to can't a contract for more than three years. It's not legal for you to do so. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I understand and, that. I mean, other towns have done it. And, I mean, North Brookfield for many years rented the entire first floor, basically, with their town hall to businesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, I'm, as far as I'm, access to the stage goes, there is another anteroom on the other side of the stage. Mm -hmm. Some stages only have that one room. 
This stage has two. I am favorable to this, but I, my, my gut tells me that, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is that we should have a hearing on this. A hearing? Allow, allow interest, anyone who's interested in this, who has something to say about this, we give them a chance to talk about it. And then when we, and then the board, then, then the board can decide after that. Just my thought is, is that if no one else has an interest in it, it's gonna be a quick hearing, because Sharon's gonna be the only one who shows up and says, I like that idea. Tom, I already spoke to the Town Hall Improvement Committee about this, and they had voted to allow it, and then they called me up and said, we need to revisit this, because we've gotten some concerns from the Cultural Council. Mm -hmm. And Kelly was at that meeting with me, and their argument was, what if we want to put on a play and we need that room? And I pointed out what I just pointed out. There is another ante room to the stage. And they said, well, what about costume changes? I said, well, you've got the entire third floor to set up a dressing room. <laughs> and I don't know, somebody else in the Town Hall Improvement Committee, maybe Don, you remember this, pointed out that they're talking about an intermittent use. And I don't know the last time a play was presented in the Town Hall, but I don't know well, of anybody who's going to. Been, it's not, I mean, and I'll nothing's <coughs> happened up there in, in many years. And Tom, I want to remind you, we're under the gun. Mm -hmm. The reason that I, I sent the letter in August, and I'm, I asked for the permission for the antenna, and I assembled this letter with the facts on it, is because we are under the gun, and I need to plan. And if you want to have a hearing, that's going to, I don't know how far out you're talking about, or what mm -hmm. kind of hearing. Uh, the hearing would just be a public meeting to take public comment. My thought is it would be, the intent would be to, to uh, in recognition of your schedule if we had it and we would have it soon. But it's like, but it seems like the concern I have, it's like I specifically had the Cultural Council in mind because I heard the same, oh, sorry. I the, the, the complaints same. Were, were made to a number of people about this before mm -hmm. I even heard of it, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Don? Uh, Town Hall Improvement Committee did review this and we did revisit it, and we felt that this was a viable option, as opposed to the cultural councils. Maybe someday, if and ever, we might someday find a possible use of this. Is not a really valid. Uh, it was not a good thing. And, and, and that's fine. Right. And so, and, and I've got a couple things then to add to that. One, to review it for years, two. Um, to get the move done, and then that gives Sharon three years to identify if there's a better solution from the studio perspective and just make the investment of the $4,000 studio to whatever. To transmitter link. To transmitter link, mm -hmm. right? And, and we can do this in, in an incremental stages while supporting something. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from people that they like the music that's on there, right? Mm -hmm. They're happy when they get back into the range of the station so that they can actually get it, even mm -hmm. though it maybe hasn't evolved into what um, the original like committee and, and Apple Country Radio like groups' intent was like to get some more like active content. I think it does deliver a certain value back to the town that, that people appreciate. So, and um, we would be once we have a well semi permanent place to be, we would be improving the content. We would be having live shows and pre recorded shows of all different genres, right. not just what you're hearing now, which is an automatic loop of 857 songs. Do you have enough room there to bring people in? So I'm sorry? Is there enough room in there to bring people in? Or? Well, we wouldn't have a mob of people in there. I'd say at most two people, me yeah. and whoever would. The yeah. I mean, I've been up there. But I've so, uh, a lot so, I mean, I, I'd like to make a motion that we um, go ahead and draft a support document to enable Chairman to move forward at least with the federal um, communications folks in order to get the license moving. Uh, I think we should move to the council people. Okay. Well, I mean, I think she, she already has. May I no. have a second? Okay, go ahead. I mean, ask you want to second it? Ask okay. if there's a second or not. Is there a second? I guess we're, yeah, I was okay, because I mean, well, for, discussion, for discussion purposes, um, my thought is we've already given her the notice of reasonable assurance to allow her to move the antenna, which is what she needed to get the. So she's, I think you have what you need to move the antenna. 
Right now, you need to solve your, your this. No, not right? quite. Oh, what the do you notice need? of I would need a lease agreement for the antenna. Okay. And so. So and that I, I think, had something. How much? And to put just the antenna here, how much space do you need? How much space? Do you need the room? I. I would need the at least the room up above the room because I need a place to put the transmitter. Okay. The fire department has an antenna. It goes through down the side of the tower into the into a space adjacent to, I believe, um, Kelly, your your office. It's underneath the stairs in the foyer upstairs. Right. That's where their transmitter is. There's no more space left upstairs that I could put something without having to put a locked cabinet there. But my, my plan was to bring the antenna cord to that little room above the stage room. I mean, if push comes to shove, I could put a lock on that door mm -hmm. and just have the antenna there. The, the thing, mean, I would still have to find a studio space. And if I can't find a studio space, we would still have to shut down antenna or no antenna. Okay. okay. So for clarification, it's. Beth, your motion was to, um, if I recall correctly, was to um, support Sharon so that she could move her antenna. But I'm thinking we've already no, done that. We've already done that. Yep. Our request was for a reason, a letter of reason for Sharon for the four months that Sharon has to enforce so she can get a license moved. Mm -hmm. And I would say if at any point you want to have a hearing, maybe it's when it comes time for these negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say we, we can definitely defer that. Um, and the thought is, is that we're going to have to, at this point, we have the option of voting to move forward with the lease negotiation for the studio space and the antenna. And then based on that, the, the, this board is going to have to vote to approve that and execute it. And that would be another venue in which the community could make its thoughts known. Yep. And so and so just thinking this through, it's like I I am comfortable with that. It's like in with the with the out of respect for the urgency that you are finding yourself in with uh, Gavit moving on with the uh, sale of the property, it's like I'm comfortable with that. So um, given yeah. that the given that the motion on the table it turns out to be superfluous um, can we, uh, it is, how is this perfect? Because the motion on the table was to give her the notice of reasonable assurance, which was already done. No. Oh, this well, is then a what was it for? Notice of reasonable assurance to move the license. We've given her one to move the antenna. I'm, so I'm sorry. Um, no, not quite. The, the antenna is what's regulated by the FCC. Right, which we gave you a letter. Right. I do not need a license to build a studio but I do need a license from the FCC to have an antenna because they regulate where it goes because the signal can't interfere with other radio stations. So what do you want in your notice of reasonable assurance? I, I had, they're on this letter. I, I don't think a notice of reasonable assurance is what she needs or she doesn't need anything she can take to a government entity is right. my understanding. What I, what I would need is a vote from this board that I can go ahead with the plans that I need to make to make this studio move Effective. Well, I, if you look, if you yeah. look on the, the, the list, starts on the bottom of the document you yeah. have, and it continues on to the next page, yeah. and it lays everything out. Yeah. So it seems to me that what she would need from us is a motion to approve the negotiation of a lease to allow her to meet these four needs. It says in this, you want a vote. Where? That's right. right. Well, I. It's it's it's. Right. Notice. I thought this was in addition to these four things are in addition to that. Yes. That. But it is an actual letter that you're asking. For. That's correct. Okay. The thing is, if I have preliminary permission, I can start making plans to upgrade the space while the lease negotiations are going on. Uh, 
so I might not be understanding this correctly, but I, what I'm hearing is that they don't want to be locked into giving you preliminary permission and then finding out that you've gone through all this and you're not, they're, they're not going to be able to sign these for the agreements. Are you talking to me or to them? Uh, I'm talking to everybody. Uh -huh. So, is, is, because it sounds like you're at cross purposes. She wants to be able to move forward and you want input, more input, more information before you're willing to agree to leasing the space. Yes, is, is that, that, that would be best. Can we, now can we? Does the rest of the board want more information before they agree to enter into this? I made a question for her, but I, I, I honestly, in this instance, I'm functionally deferring to the work that's already been done by the time we're with the committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, I mean, and, and the members of that committee are very sensitive to um, like feedback from the community because I think they have a vested interest in getting community investment in upgrading, rehabbing, and increasing the use of this building, okay? So um, I, it sounds like they weigh the potential risk to a minor inconvenience for a potential future intermittent use against putting portions of the building to use and getting it upgraded in the interim from the standpoint of electrical and, and potentially connectivity issues at somebody else's expense. It kind of sounds like a win-win because nothing happens in three years in this town. <laughs> Sorry. And, 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 your point, and your point, and, and, to, and to a certain extent, the, uh, the, the ballroom still needs to be, it, it, needs, it still needs its makeover before right. a play is going to happen. Yeah, I was going to say, a, a year to two before it's even ready to start using poor stuff. Mm -hmm. right. It um, needs its makeover, and then we need to make it two-way. And, and we're we, five to ten before we well, well, we got to make it two-way for ta for annual town meeting. We just have to make it nice to be have it a usable space. Yeah. So, so, so I think we're talking about a potential year of risk functionally, mm -hmm. and that allows Sharon to do the most expedient and um, manageable move of mm -hmm. the antenna and studio, provide that service to the community, even though it's not necessarily a municipal service, but it is a community service, mm -hmm. right? And provides a little more runway. If we do need to do something about reclaiming that space, we can, we can do it in a plan and coordinate it maybe. The risk to the town in this is almost non-existent. The risk to my organization is minimum $10,000 we're going to be spending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tenth, and that is based on just moving the antenna. Yeah. So I have a good, that's the other thing, I have a lot of fundraising to do for this and grant proposals, which I have to do by myself. I need to know that I'm not going to run into a brick wall with the town before I take on that work. If the town is unwilling to, or if this board is unwilling to, to let me see this through, I'm going to have to make other plans. Either, well, I don't know. Um, the only one I can think of at the moment is to shut down the radio station, surrender the license, and say it was a good run, and we're done. Mm -hmm. So Beth, to clarify, your original motion, um, was that to um, agree to the, uh, provide the uh, letter that Sharon's asking for, the uh, preliminary letter of agreement? Okay, I, 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 mis I misunderstood, but that's why we have discussion. I may not have, I may not have enunciated it clearly. What I have is that you said, go ahead and draft a support document to the Fed communication folks. So okay, Sharon's so I need, I need to read that. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 Specifically, um, I'd like to make a motion that we provide a preliminary letter of agreement that meets the, the four requests that's within the document dated uh, October 2023, which functionally includes studio space, uh, preliminary agreement, and includes negotiation for um, the placement of the studio space. Reading it again. All right. Any more discussion on that? 
All right. All in favor of um, issuing the letter of preliminary agreement and authorizing the uh, start of uh, formal lease negotiations with Apple Country Radio for the um, for their lease of the space uh, stage right upstairs. Stage, stage right? right. That's stage right. Okay. Um, say say aye. 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 I also want, as sort of a coda to this discussion, which I heartily thank you all for, is that. I'm willing to provide this body with any and all information you need now and in the future. I actually drew up a list of all of the questions I might be asked. <laughs> it's, plan. it's a page and a quarter. Mm -hmm. How many did we get? Huh? How many did we get? Um, you got about five. All right. But most have to do with the sequence of moving in and what has to be done and who's going to be responsible for it. I'm, I'm details. Details. Right. So. Next time? Doing a five by five grid, and when we get a line, yell bingo. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting punchy. Okay, okay Sharon, we done? We need to. Can we, we now officially speed date the rest of this? Ah, uh, yes. Thank um, you all. Please. Okay, thank you. Okay, sign contract for fire alarm. I make a motion um, that we sign a contract. There are two. The engineering? Yes, the engineering only, please, because we don't need the procurement, um, because there isn't enough money to do the procurement. All right, and so we can get procurement, we can pay them to do procurement returns later. Well, the problem is that we don't have enough ARPA money, so what we need to do is... Yes. We need to design the before we can do anything. Right, so but... Got that on the deck, let's get the design. Yeah. No, and, but my point and is, it's like, if, we, if later we decide we really wanted the procurement insurance, we can add that in later. Yes. We can add have the pros in. Excellent. All right, so, okay, so there was a, was that a motion? That was a motion to approve the engineering contract for the environmental Yeah. For contract uh, uh, for design only. For design only for the. Okay. What what is the amount of design only? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Okay, because it says contract documents here, which to me, I guess that means the the. Uh, Where do you see the word contract documents? Page three, fee for scope of services, number one contract documents. I am still looking for the <laughs> folder that has that in it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that I asked him the same question, and um, the contract documents, if they were to put together, this is this is because it sounded to me like they were going to write contract documents for the bid administration, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't have an engineer writing a contract. This is just them. Their contract documents. Doing this. These, this, yes. these, these are the design yes. documents that will go that's into the contract yeah. that we execute and with whoever wins the bid to install. That's the documents that yeah. are the product that they deliver as far as that's, and that's, and that, Okay, and it, it's just, it did, I didn't bucket it easily, so that's why I want to ask the question. All right, so it's a $12,000 quote. Brad, you second it? All right. Um, all in favor of signing the uh, contract with Consulting Engineering Services for $12,000 for the design of a fire alarm for this wonderful town hall, say aye. 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 Approved. Stipend and payroll, stipend payroll policy and sick bank policy. Right, Kelly stipend. takes the lead. All right, so here's here's the deal. A sick bank, a sick bank is allowed by policy based on what the selectmen decide. It doesn't need to go to town meeting vote. It doesn't need to be any more town meeting vote. It's a policy decision based on the select board. We have an employee who is leaving. Um, because he's retiring, he would like to donate his sick time to a fellow member of his team. Um, you can approve a one-off, and he can donate all of his sick time uh, to that person so that they have it in a bank for themselves. And then what I would like to do, not tonight, um, is to move forward with a sick, a volunteer sick bank uh, that people can donate time in case someone else who works here needs the time because they have an egregious illness. So I, I would like a motion to allow um, for Don Heber. Don Heber to transfer his sick time to the person of his choosing. I'll make that motion, just like you said. All right. Um, just for clarification. You um, can't clarify who it's for, just so that you know. I understand that. Okay, I just wanted to say that before, just before, in case. If you didn't, <laughs> if, before I say a name. No, my, my question is, um, in this transfer, do the... Um, do the sick days become the um, the assigned property of the of the recipient employee, or yes. do they? Okay. Because it's a one-off with just this one employee. 
that you will be approving his right. transfer right. so, to this right. one we're, person. We're just doing it once though, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Yeah. And then um, after I'll bring you, I'll bring you a, a proposal yeah. for a sick thing that will be inclusive and have yeah. all the rules and how you can get the uh, time out and all of that at a future date. Mm -hmm. Is there? All right, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, all right, all in favor of allowing the transfer of the sick days to the unnamed, the employee we may not name for for important legal reasons. To the employee of Don Hebert's choice. Oh, to the employee of Don Hebert's choice, which we okay. Thank you for the clarification. Um, all in favor of the uh, allowing that transfer, please say aye. 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 All right, uh, this, the stipend policy, I, I sent you, I think, a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've run into issues with departments, not boards and committees in particular, not submitting payroll on time, doing it incorrectly. There have been errors um, that are, it's a problem. So what I would like to propose is that stipends with this policy be provided annually at the end of the year. And if somebody were to separate, then they would get a prorated amount based on their separation time if they were to put their board or committee. We need to put that in here explicitly because uh, it is not the policy. I see people rejecting. It's not, it's not in it? I thought it was in it. Okay. So I think the only, um, the only thing I would say is we would add a bullet that uh, for uh, first time to be serviced prior to the end of the year. And, and that the other board members can't absorb yeah. the, the leftover stipend of a missing board member. And the reason for that is if that place, that person is replaced at some point in the year, that fund is gone. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that that rolls back to the town at the end of the year. And this will, everybody will get paid at the same time. There will be no question about it. We won't have to go through, oh, I didn't get it in in time to pay you over this month. I didn't do it for three months, so I need to go back for five months and get, you know, and I'm going to, and sometimes they're prepaying themselves for months they haven't been there. We had, um, board officials who were paid that weren't even on board anymore. So I'm just trying to fix this this issue. I'd like to make a motion to accept this with the addition of the bill of saying for personality and service prior to the end of the year, they will be eligible for appropriated amount at your end. So you don't get it for the year, they just get it at the end of the year for everybody else. I like that, yeah. Um, all in favor of the adopting the uh, policy as um, supplemented by Beth, please say aye. Aye. Sure. Aye. No worries. That, that wasn't bad. No, I was teasing. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Longevity discussion. Funding discrepancy. Lovely. So the way this was voted, and I went back and listened to it, Beth was, had the, the forethought to say that anything after the calculated amount for the full-time employees would be distributed to the fire department. The fire department number, which is what was adopted, is 31.5. You can see from the sheet, it's shy. So we have a couple of issues. One, do we want to add emergency services to the personnel handbook? Obviously, the town feels that they should have a stipend, and I have to say I agree with them. Um, they, that would need to be amended. And who gets the money since we don't have enough? It's paid at the end of the year. Oh, yeah, awesome. So we could fund it even at the annual because it, it would be available for FY, we could put an article on that it would be available for FY23. Because everybody's paid at the end of the year. Yeah, that's true. So we can, we can have an article to fund the difference. Yeah. But it needed to be brought to your attention, so. Yeah, I'd rather not try to pick and shoot people. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we can intend to um, supplement, raise the funding level to the necessary levels for everyone to get their um, 
earn stipend. Rather than telling everyone, well, we got 92% of the money, so you get 92% of your stipend. Turn it down to one of those top four fiascos yeah, I could have Well, and the, they, the fire department recommended the number. Yeah. They, but they weren't calculating the other employees, and, and their records were not right. So we had to go back and figure out when people actually started working for the fire department and get there. It was, it was an interesting exercise in, the, in HR to correct. Um, mm -hmm. To make sure that the, the records at the fire department match the records that we have, and to mm -hmm. make sure that everybody's right. So, all right. So, do we vote on that? Or There's we nothing vote? to vote. It just, it just. Oh, we, we've, 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 we've announced, we've decided how we're going to figure it out, but we don't need to vote anything. Correct. Got it. All right. So, launch every discussion. Eight's done. Uh, resignation. Sharon, you resigned, but you're still here. She's right. volunteering to, to video, oh. but she is no longer on the cable. There is no cable committee. There's not a single member on that anymore. All right. I took well, it off the website as an active board. Yeah. We will uh, accept, uh, shall we accept it with regret or with thanks? Well, it was effective immediately, so you can make note of it. Yeah. yeah. With regrets. Mm -hmm. so. Sharon, thank you for all your help with the town. And thank you for still being here. All right, um, number 10, resignation, Holly from the personnel board. So that was like another immediate resignation. Yep. Yep. So now we have one person on the personnel board. Maybe. Was there any reason? Well, because she, well, what she said to me, and, and I don't know if this is what her actual reasoning was. But what she expressed to me is she didn't see a need for the personnel board. And I explained that it was a bylaw that the, that the town has a personnel board. And that job descriptions and things of that nature, she says, all the jobs are in place. So, you know, to have so a board. Have one. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have a personnel board. You are. You can have a board of one. So whatever board is created typically defers, it defaults to the select board. So is that a person get removed or do they? Uh, no, I don't know if they've been sworn in. Uh, and I don't know. But so that's, she, she, that was the reason that she stated to me was that she didn't feel the need for a personnel board because it was originally to set salary wages and do the salary study and all of that was done. When they created the personnel board, it was because they wanted a personnel handbook. And the yeah. handbook, that's done. And it's because they wanted to do a personnel survey and get people's salaries up to speed, which was done with the Common Center. Mm -hmm. That's, we don't have a recent one. Yeah. But it was done by an outside company. But that, that I'm just telling you what she said to me. I don't mm -hmm. know yeah. if there are other reasons or more or less, or she just thought about it. And but now effectively anything that's the responsibility that the bylaw assigns to the personnel board rolls into the select board. We're now responsible for it. Um, I, I don't know that for a fact. But okay. Because of the, if the bylaw is silent on that. But mm -hmm. typically it rolls over to you. That's mm -hmm. a typical. Thing that happens when the board disappears. Okay. All right. All right so Number you have select board meeting day. Yes. Um, as always, now that now that falls around and my kids' sports schedules have settled in, it's like I wanted to. I, I know that from talking to Karen that um, Thursdays are a little challenging for her since she's not in on Fridays, and so I wanted to see if there was a day earlier in the week that the other board members are available to meet, and, or if we want to keep it on Thursdays. I'm open. I had talked to Karen about. I mean, I'm open to doing something. I'm just I'm bound on Tuesdays. Tuesdays your only day. Or Tuesdays you're not available. Yeah, I'm in the bus. All right. Tuesday. And at the moment, that's my only other available day. So we're staying with Thursdays. Mm -hmm. All right, nice and fast. Thank you. Tree warden. I know it's not on the agenda, but can I make a motion that that going forward that we limit our meetings to two hours and anything after that gets pushed to the next meeting? Um. 
I, you know, I can be. We can. We can. Sorry. I know it was not on the agenda. So was that? Was that? No, it's not. It's not on the agenda. We. I can. I can put it on the agenda next time. We were talking about meeting days. Oh, that's true. So, yeah, but but uh, no, a policy to limit meeting length. That. Well, meeting days, meeting schedule, meeting calendar, meeting length. But <laughs> we needed to because we were getting crammed up. I mean, unfortunately, we could just set up for two meetings a month. Yeah. And, I, and we could have a motion to just, and, I, to, and we could just have a motion right. that if we were like in the middle of a discussion and we needed to go past the two hours, we could probably try uh, to. Well, I'll, be, I'll be honest, it was the, um, we needed to, the six and seven we needed to do, and then we've been rolling pretty well since then. I know I was on six, Kelly said, had to be handled at this yeah. meeting. Right. All right, so, um, uh, so I'll take a motion to. So, so we've got a motion in a second. Are we going to vote that? What, on limiting the, the meeting to two hours without, um, or with the understanding that the board can extend, it's like when the board completes the in progress. If you want to extend it, so we have a line to extend, we can extend it, but. But that otherwise we're just going to, we'll finish the, t the agenda item we're on, and then it's yeah, like, we're done. Yeah, that would put up as a policy, and, and when we put out the calendar, that the, that the, the schedule for the board of selectmen meeting is 6.15 to 8.15. Mm -hmm. And we'll extend it if we must, if we if we if we feel it's important enough. Um, yep, I can. All in favor, say aye. 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 I can I can live with that, and if we find this problem, we can change okay, it. Okay, so the motion is making six fifteen to eight fifteen. We'll extend the calendar. Pardon me. And it can only be extended if you vote against the motion. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, tree warden report. Anyone? Uh, majestic. All right. Uh, and does anyone have anything else? Does anyone else have any? I actually read it. It was good. It was very detailed. He does a wonderful it's, 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 it's just. Every time it, I read one, I'm going. Oh. It, just, it, just threw, it just threw me because it, it's very diary oriented. Because he said something, he, that he did something on one day, and then two weeks later he said he went back and revisited it and changed his mind. And to me, it's just like I'd have rather just gone to the end. But anyway, I, but I'm slight reference. Anyway, so does anyone have anything they, else on the tree report other yeah. than uh, tremendous? Okay, uh, there we go. Um, approve minutes eight one twenty three and eight four twenty three. So moved. Uh, let's see, Beth. I'm sorry. So moved. Second. All right. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes from August 1st and August 24th, uh, 23, please say aye. 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 All right. And acknowledge the June police report. I'll make a motion to acknowledge the June police report as previously received. Second. All right. All in favor of acknowledging the police report, please say aye. 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 And uh, correspondence, Spectrum, Disney Channels, I, I, I don't get cable, it's so the they just, uh, removing its programming, uh, so all the Disney-based channels have gone away from <gasps> Charter, and yes, including ESPN, all the Disney's, um, National Geographic, and uh, a couple sports networks. Um, I'm sure Charter has, it, yes. Um, all right, uh, let's see. And I think I just have to mention that we got the correspondence. There's no action to take. It's no, the monthly report schedule, that's just going to be the next one. Oh, yeah, I skipped over that. Um, no, I, we'll do that the next one. Yes, no, I was just going to say, I'm, uh, any, uh, any objection to uh, we're deferring monthly report schedule discussion to the next now meeting? I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. That makes it easy. Yeah. So moved. All right. Gonna, you get a second. She moved. <laughs> oh. He got a little excited. All right, all in favor of getting out of here on the journey, say aye. 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 Uh, the contract that you have for the do not sign the contracts for the um, 